1992 season. Right now, it's race number six of 1992. And it's been quite a great season so far. Um, in this race, we'll be watching 1992 Food City 500 at Bristol. Hopefully, I don't get this video taken down. Hopefully, everything goes well in regard to Twitch and YouTube. And I'll be able to watch this whole thing. And y'all will be able to watch this whole thing, too. So, let's go ahead and get started. It's the Food City 500 Winston Cup race. It rained here most of the day yesterday at Bristol, but the sun is out today. It remains very cool, however, and it's a little windy. Yeah, it's a all decent all, weather race, race weather. nothing too crazy. As we enter the sixth race of the year and the question yeah, for the it's, Cup it's crazy how, like, Davey Allison is leading the points when Bill Elliott's nearly won four races in a row. I, I've never figured out why, win, but it's their point system Davey back then. I never the got stage. that, but Larry Labonte's fourth and points is pretty crazy. In the second five, you find Alan Kowicki, today's pole sitter, and the defending Winston Cup champion, Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, Dick Frickles had, a, had a, a good season so far as well. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Jenkins, and welcome to Bristol, the world's Bob fastest Jenkins, half mile what a racetrack. Legend. And it's even faster this year because of the new pavement. Two and a half miles an hour over last year's track record. That's what Alan Kowicki qualified at for today's race. Now, we enter the short track portion of the Winston Cup season here today, and that means that tensions begin to rise. And who could I won't be, to I'm not able to see the chat here on this when um, I'm watching career. videos like this, Ned so I'm going to have to well, Bob, see right. a delay when on my phone. Tracks, normally you can see a lot of but I'll try to be here as common as I can. Those tempers. But this year it seemed to start a little bit early because last week at Darlington we saw a lot of close racing there. Yeah. Few bumps, this is when uh, <laughs> Jeff Bodine took out Daryl Waltrip. And kind of last race. Here today? None. We're going to see some serious fender bending today. We have to. It's a half I really enjoy watching old races. I, I prefer fun. watching them more to the, the ones now. I just the love to see the history and the throwback you know, like, cars and just the style of racing back then compared to now. It's way better back then. 90s, 80s, way better. You mentioned that Bill Elliott's won all the races. Yeah, Ford has won the last nine Western Cup races in a row. But Jerry Punch, maybe there's a ray of hope for the G drivers. You're exactly right, Ed. In fact, even though Ford swept the front row for the fifth time this year, there's calls for smiles in the GM camp. That's Let's Dale Jarrett. Two, for example, Dale Jarrett, his best qualifying effort of the year in the Interstate Battery Chevrolet. Yes, he has not won, but remember, car owner Joe Gibbs was 0-5 his first five games of the Redskins, and we all know what's happened since. He has turned it around. Maybe Jarrett can hear and start number Should six. I skip ahead to the start of the race, or should I just leave it the way it the is? Six spring events here. Rusty Wallace, because I'm sure they'll have a star lineup screen. Yes, I want to see a star Rusty lineup a screen so I could uh, make my Bucks pick. Qualified third, and he and the Gen Miller Genuine Draft crew have been smiles all weekend. There's Rusty. Rusty's, Rusty's one of the best drivers ever at Bristol. Back in town. Let's go further up to the starting grid to John Kernan. I, Dale Earnhardt has struggled so far this season, but I've already I already know that he had, he didn't have a good season this year. I, just from reading in books and stuff like that, I know he finished like 12 in points or something like that. He didn't have a good season at all. He had like one win. Yeah, but they had won the two seasons before, then they won the championship. In those three short track events. Now, Dale could not take over the points lead today, but he could conceivably move into the top five. He trails Morgan Shepard by only 38 points. But and Morgan Shepard's been pretty consistent been so far in the season. At Bristol. He has posted only I'm thinking about doing more finish. of these streams. Dale is um, one of watching the races, to turn their so here today I think it would be cool to do the Pocono race for sure. The Maybe the Pepsi the Cup uh, 400. And Some of those. It's just about time to get that famous command. Currently a representative in the House of Representatives. All right, so you start the engines. And a candidate for the Senate in the first district of the great state of Tennessee. Welcome, Mr. Jim Holcomb, for those all. Let me know also if the volume's Jim. good, if y'all can hear me in the chat. Gentlemen, start your engine. See you on my phone. All right, the audio sounds fine on my phone. Even though it's oh, I think we should be all set. 
for 500 laps of competition on this half-mile racetrack in the Food City 500 Winston Cup race, and we're glad you could join us. I'm going to skip you ahead. We'll be back. Winston, the driver leads. C30 starters, starting for seven. All right, starting grid. Okay, this was a new start with. Track record of 122.4. Oh, a track record at the time. One thing series. Oh. Seven, Allen from Greenfield, Wisconsin. I, if I, I'm guessing here. I'm pretty sure I know who won this race, but then again, I don't know. I can't remember if I've. I don't think I've watched this race, but I don't want to make a guess. It did spoil it, so I'm not going to make a prediction. I know I was going to say that earlier, but. But I'm not gonna make a prediction because if I predict the right person, people are like, "Oh, you already knew." Uh, Hutch Strickland has a great starting spot. <laughs> Mike's in the chat saying, "Yep, yes, yes." Number four, driven by Ernie Urban, starts in seventh position, and the Kodiak Chevrolet, driven by Ken Schrader from Fenton, Missouri, goes from outside of row number four. Ken Schrader, he, he was doing decent. Mark Martin's had some good races. Like he struggled in some of the races at the very beginning, and then the second half turned things around. Number 30. Michael Waltrip's had a good season so far, too. But he had that uh, fire at Richmond, and he struggled at Darlington a little bit. Carolina's Harry Gant in the Skull Oldsmobile car number 33. The number 21 Sitco Ford of Morgan Shepard from Conover, North Carolina, starts in 13th position. Then outside the seventh row is the king, Richard Petty. The king, the goat. That's why he's the goat. Richard Petty. Row number eight consists of... Bonnie starting 16th, 15th. Ultra Oldsmobile car number 94, and then Daryl Waltrip in the number Darryl 17 Waltrip. Western Auto He won a lot at Bristol. I think he has the most wins there. I'm um, correct. Rudd in car number five, and defending Winston Cup champion Dale Earnhardt in car number three, and then the rest of the field will have to start on the. Uh, oh, in the, the, the if you're watching in the chat right now, yeah, predict like give a prediction of how many wrecks you think there'll be because Bristol back in the 90s it was a wreck fest for most of them. We'll look at the rest of the starting lineup and tell you that Jimmy Spencer was the only driver who came here and was unable to make the field. Ah, Jimmy Spencer didn't make the field. That's In car kind of interesting. Today, several of them will be riding with uh, Mark Martin. Hey, onboard shot right Martin there. Has a very good starting position uh, for this race. If you haven't yet, go. Uh, the number 66 car. Go follow my NASCAR account at NASCAR Onboards on Instagram. That's one of the accounts we run on there. Also run at Savage NASCAR. And I'm also on the Naz Boys podcast, so go check out. If you want to see more NASCAR content from me other than on my YouTube channel and here, go check those out. And Facebook. I post a lot of NASCAR stuff on Facebook as well. Looks like he's got some lemonade ready to go there in case it gets on thirsty during the race. Some of those collector cans on the dash. Full speed. Full time. 15 seconds. Yep. International Raceway. Just a little over a half mile. One, if the vi two, if this four, is like if he's cut out commercials six, six, for this video, we'll go then and the field is separated. Look at this by the race probably went by pretty decently. I my guess is there'll probably be like nine cautions, maybe. If there's more now, I'd be surprised because a lot of the Bristol races were like four hours long. But it depends on how many wrecks they had. The banking. The corners banked at 36 degrees. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to go to Bristol sometime. 16 degrees. I've never Third been to Bristol before. Track, one of the best attended races. But it's one of my favorite tracks. Competition here at Bristol, as new grandstands have been added, and the uh, Thunderbird pace car now carrying uh, a camera as we look back on the field as it comes down, getting set for the start next time around. You mentioned, Bob, that pitting on the back is a disadvantage. As the day wears on, we'll show you what a huge disadvantage it is for the cars that's pitting back there. And Dale Earnhardt qualified 18. I think there's 18 cars on the front, so he just barely made, although he would have been able to pit on the front, being last year's champion. In case All right, in, in the case comments, if you're watching, you give, give your prediction down below of who you think is going to win. Almost 7 o'clock last night, won by Harry Gant. He and the other 31 drivers in this field get set to go as the pace car comes off the 36 degree banking and heads for the pit area. Here comes the start of the Food City 500. Green, green, green. Let's go racing. Man, so cool. Just watching the, just watching these races from the 90s at Bristol. It's, it's, it's pretty incredible to watch. And the inside groove was the main groove instead of the outside lane. Mark 
here's a clip I used from my onboards account like a month or two ago. I used actually use this this part where it's Chad Little and Mark Barnes on board for like 30 seconds. I don't know if my chat's updating or not. I can't tell. I think it's stuck on the yeses, but... And Darrell Waltrip seems to be moving up. I think uh, Dale Earnhardt will have a strong run today. Because he, he, was, he was really good at Bristol. Morgan Shepard. A steady string of cars halfway around this racetrack, all on the bottom of the racetrack. Elliott running for 11. Meanwhile, back up front. Once I get to the 15-minute mark, I'm going to eat some pizza. I've already eaten some of it, but a slice. Tries to find a way around. The leader is Alan Kowicki and Rusty Wallace is running second. Then comes Strickland, Jarrett, Brett Bodine, Ernie Irvin, Ken Schrader, Michael Waltrip, and Davey Allison. And Davey Allison started in sixth place in a long time before he could get back in line. So All right, he's trying there. to get his nose in there, but cut with the nice block. Wow, he almost, you could tell he like bumped him a little bit. He didn't move him all the way out of the way, though. Now Davey Allison trying to take the position away from Michael Waldrop, moving to the inside, going into turn one, and he does. Man, I don't know about y'all, but I've always liked that Michael Waldrop pins oil scheme. Pontiacs, I, the Pontiacs are like one of my favorite cars from the 90s and the late 80s. Alright, Mike says he's picking Daryl Waltrip to win. Which Waltrip? I think. I'm, gu I'm guessing he's trying to say Daryl Waltrip, but there's two of them. <laughs> There's competition caution, I think is what they just said. As Ned indicated, he got caught outside at the drop of the green flag and dropped back to fifth position, but now he's trying to look for the way back up past Dale Jarrett and Use the bump. Uh, it is a little early, so I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't bump him, but Kowicki and Wallace are running away from everybody. Strickland's just hauling everybody up. Wow, that's a quick commercial. 11 laps. Huh. I, that, I, I know back then they didn't usually go to commercials that fast, but I guess ESPN set the tone for that. Wow. It's stuck to the plate. How am I going to eat? <laughs> How am I going to eat this? All right, there we go. By the way, with Smith TV, he's one of my favorite YouTubers. He uploads a lot of races and stuff. Oh, we got wreck. Man, Rich Petty got in that thing. Oh man. That as a man, that's Sterling Marlin. He's been in like two wrecks recently. He wrecked at Atlanta, I think. No, I think he wrecked at Darlington. It was Atlanta or Darlington he wrecked. But man, yep, Richard Petty. Man, early into his day. But as I was saying, um. Smith TV with the raw satellite feeds, it doesn't show the commercials, it shows the raw satellite feed, not the actual like TV broadcast. So that's why there's like a silence and it still kept showing the cars after it said it was going to commercial break. So hopefully that helps clarify things. It's, it's a shame to see. I mean, I was hoping Richard would get a good run. Then he gets taken out. STP Man, nowhere to go. By Richard Petty, one of about four cars involved in an incident coming off of turn number two, and there is the other driver uh, that uh, crashed his car. 
That is Sterling Marlin. In for a pit stop is Bill Elliott as he changes rubber on the left side of that car. All right, Bill Elliott getting an early pit stop. 16 laps, but they might have had a tire going down or something. Here's Sterling Marlin. This is the start finish line going out in turn one. Following Ricky Rudd as he exits Price turn two. Like really we'll see the car all of a sudden it just turns right like he did in Dawson last week. See? The car just all of a sudden the right front goes down and into the yep. wall. Along comes Richard with nowhere to go. Now Richard could slow down time. Cars. The Dave Mater car will come spinning in. There's Dave Marcus spinning. Dave Mater also spins. But Sterling's car just like last week all of a sudden just... That's unfortunate. The right front goes flat like he ran over something. Jerry, how come Bill Elliott oh, made to go this pit stop here on the uh, 16th lap? Bob, you guys were talking earlier about how that many of the crews were guessing on the chassis setup because they didn't get any practice at all yesterday with the inclement weather and the lengthy Bush Grand National Race. Well, Elliott has completed right, the back. first few laps of the car being so loose he can hardly drive it. Mike well, just, just comments me eating. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a race. I'm going to watch when I watch the race. I'm going to eat. And so he could drive it and be able to run maybe a little lower on the racetrack and maybe pass some cars back upstairs. Uh, I think he's just joking. One thing, um, in the back stretch, it's interesting, Mike, Mike does the uh, Nice Voice podcast with me. And um, they may try to get that car so we joke about how Mike eats whenever we do episodes, so I think that's what he was kind of referencing. For the king here as he had a great starting position. This was his 59th start here at Bristol. Wow. Petty's last win was in 1975 at Bristol. I thought he last won. Bristol in 1980, but all right. Not his best track, that's for sure. He was pretty good at other short tracks, though. In our petty moment. Petty memories. Oh, yeah, they they showed some of these during the last couple races I've watched. They have one for each, one segment for each one. Bristol International Raceway has been the setting for some tough moments and three hard-fought victories for Richard Petty. In 1975, he swept both events at the raceway. But it wasn't easy. I won a race up there in 1975, and uh, the the way I had, you know, we, we had to put a situation under your arm and you hang on your head because you go around in circles and you can't can't do anything. So I put that thing on and we run. And about the last half of the race, I didn't even have any feeling in my left arm, and I had to drive with the right arm and still. Oh wow! Race. So I felt like I'd done a good job that particular day. Yeah, Tony, drivers used yes, to drive through a lot of injuries and stuff back in the day. They were tough. The race, and they out, uh, Sterling it's a long cleanup, that's for sure. I might have to skip some of this. Right, oh, here's a fast the replay. Right the yep, he had tire go down. To the right, that was like the almost the, the same spot that uh, Michael Waltrip hit in 1990 in the Bush race, and it disintegrated the car. Almost the same exact spot. John Kernan is with Sterling. Sterling, we look and we see a big truck <laughs> up there. We yep, almost Mike. crashed through the gate like Michael yep, that's, did. Yeah, that's what that? I was that's doing. <laughs> yeah, I saw it coming, and uh, this ain't gonna be good. But you know, they fixed the gate, and hey, we can handle luck. We can and tell Marlon's just something. disappointed. He's, He's like, man, that race just ended uh, that early. Fix it, get the Max Plows, uh, take some feet forward back in the race, and see what we do. Well, I think they uh, blew a left or a right front tire once again for the second week. Uh, Bob. Uh, yeah, some tough luck for Sterling Marlin, who uh, has had bad luck almost all year long. Jerry Putch has another report on pit road. We mentioned they might put a caution flag out about lap 35 or 40. NASCAR has now informed the crews that on lap 50, about 30 green flag laps from now, or about 28 to 30 green flag laps from now, 50, 52, somewhere along Jimmy there. Jimmy starting. They put out the Are they going to pit now? The crews take a look at the no, tires and the chances yet. of the car. The Goodyear has a great tire. Nothing to do with tire wear. It's the fact that the crew Goodyear has a great tire. <laughs> that aged well. Well, I mean, they had some good years, but with, uh, I, honestly, I thought Hoosier tires did better than Goodyear. Jerry, I would bet that Michael Walter and Morgan Shepard came in after they were informed that that other caution would come out. I, and, hey, honestly, like when I first started watching NASCAR, I didn't know they did. I didn't know when they started to do the competition cautions, but apparently they started in like the early 90s. All right, about to get started. And I'm about to finish doing my Snapchat streak, so I'm sending it out there, buddy. 
position because the laps are like 15 seconds here and positions do change but this is there we go finally it's sent out to the boat I have like a hundred people I do snapchat streaks with for those that don't know what snap uh, snapchat streaks are basically it's uh it helps you with your snapchat score uh, I, I'm sure some of y'all watching probably have no clue what I'm talking about so I'm not if you want to know just let me know and I'll I'll explain it some of these cars back here, Bob, have made pit stops like Kyle Petty and Bill Elliott, Morgan Shepard, and uh, Michael Walter. Dave Marcus lost a lap in the pits. Didn't make, didn't beat the pace car. Wow. It's unfortunate for Dave Marcus. That he well, I'm surprised Shepard. Michael Waltrip's that far back. Uh, Richard Petty and Sterling Marlin's cars are beat up. They are not officially out of the race just yet, but the green flag is coming out. All right, yeah, okay. Competition. All right, we're back racing. Yay. I had to set my phone up so I could try to read the comment section. I need to get like a double screen so I could see both at once. Al Kalicki pulling away again. Single file line though. Everyone's hugging the bomb lane. But so far, it seems like Kawicki and Dave, or not Davey, Kawicki and Rusty have the two strongest cars, but Davey Austin's been leading a lot of laps so far this season. That's why he's first in points. Dale Jarrett, this is the first season, if I'm correct, that Dale Jarrett was in the 18 and with uh, Joe Gibbs Racing. Then the next year, 1993, Dale Jarrett won the Daytona 500. Oh, we got another one. Oh, that's Bill Elliott spun out. And he just got new tires, too. He won the last four races. Well, his, I don't think he's going to win five in a row. Quick spin. Sometimes back then, they wouldn't throw the caution for just that minor of a spin. But... Cautions have been the story here in the first 32 laps of the first yeah, city five. Two in the first right 32 laps. Crazy. Welcome back to Bristol International Raceway, the Food City 500. Bill Elliott bringing out another caution flag. He spun. He said that he got tapped on the inside by Kyle Petty. That's what he was telling the crew on the radio. They have made a pit stop, changed four tires. They have been back on the racetrack, and we're getting set for more green flag racing. Yay. Back on green again. Ah, Glad Smith TV edited that to where we'd have to watch the whole commercial break. Back racing. Oh, Rusty with the inside move here. He's going to go for the lead. Ah, he cut him off. The third car in line's a lap car, by the way. Yeah. Hutch Strickland's been hauling up Jared for a while. I wonder how long um, he'll tolerate it. And then Brett Bodine, he Brett Bodine had a great race at Darlington. And he's up there in the top ten. Dale Earnhardt trying to get underneath Ricky Rudd. There you go, Dale. Nice pass. And there's a... Well, I forget his name. I, I I had his name earlier in my head. Yep, Chad Little. I saw it on the screen. Chad Little. When I was younger, I used to thought think that the Phillips 66 logo was like a Route 66 logo, but I miss seeing those uh, gas station signs. I haven't seen a Phillips 66 gas station in a long time. There's Terry Labonte in front of Earnhardt. Yeah, there's Michael. Mikey. Moving his way up. There's Morgan Shepard not wearing driver's gloves. Some of the drivers back then didn't wear, wear gloves, and it's way different than it is nowadays. The sport has changed a lot over the years. And the word is that Dale Jarrett, who currently is running in fourth position, may have a tire going down. There's Dale running behind Hutt Strickland, that 
red and white car, number nine, leading this group, is not on the lead lap. That's Dave Mater. I don't know what that noise is. I heard a noise. There's Jared in fourth, and now Ricky Rudd tries to make a move on Terry Labonte. Terry Labonte's falling back. just went by the Labonte car. Stuck on the outside lane. A lot of fans did like. Earnhardt looks like he's on the way to the front. Just can't make the pass. Car still side by side. There's, There's Daryl Walsh. Walsh he's trying to work his way up as well. He started towards the back. He will abandon the effort at the moment to take over that position from Terry Labonte. The 12th spot. Labonte running in 12. There's Harry Gant. And many yep. Harry Gant's had a really good season so far as well. Very consistent. This afternoon. Now we get word, as you mentioned, uh, Dale Jarrett's car, that the spotter is saying, well, the tire looks okay. He's really not running that bad, Bob. He had dropped back a little bit. The car looked a little bit loose for him, but I know he wants to hang on. If they are going to throw that caution at 50, 55 laps now, since we've already had two cautions, I don't know if they will or not, but I'm uh, I'm sure he wants to hang on at least that long. And a lot of single file racing so far. I want to see more bumping. Come on, guys. The first two cars are well out ahead of this group, led by Hutch Strickland, then Dale Jarrett, Fred Bodine, and Ernie Irvin. First and second at the moment belong to... Here you go, Mark. We should post these on boards. I've already posted... Uh, I've already posted a couple from this race on the onboards account, so the answer will be no. <laughs> but I know a lot more people like uh, seeing onboards of races from the 90s so I'm trying to find more clips of those on the outside of Gant they run side by side through the second corner looking at the I like the Ford to Lynn retreat thing they use their disc graphic I like it a lot they've uh, used that Mark Martin's car the last couple races he's at Richmond and Atlanta and Darlington oh Mark on the wall he got loose by the way, Mark Martin's birthday was yesterday, um, January the 9th. Need some pretzels. Look at this giant sack of pretzels. Like these. They have like, then they're salted too, so. Now Brett O'Donnell almost got by Dale there. There's Davey Allison making his way back up. Oh, hopefully I don't get copyrighted for using that. This music. If I do, then rip. I think it should be good now. I did. I should have been more careful with that at the beginning because I'll probably end up getting copyrighted now. So that's unfortunate. Anyways, here comes Davy Alston making his way up to the front. Dale Jarrett's being stuck on the outside. Wow, he's just getting fast by everybody now. You know, that's what shows, like, back in the 90s, if you get stuck on the outside lane, <laughs> you have a hard time getting back low, and he finally did in front of Mark, but... He lost, like, five spots. Just love the sound of the engines, you know. Back at 
Bristol International Raceway, the Food City 500 Winston Cup racing. And you'd think these guys would be kinder to each other, but Dale Jarrett got out of the groove, and before yep. it was over, he had fallen from fourth position all the way back and to there's the Terry Labonte. Running right now ahead of Mark Martin, and the yellow flag is out. This is the mandatory clock. Oh, and there's competition caution. Uh, skip through the competition yeah, caution, we'll probably. Okay. Oh, well, Smith did. <laughs> That's good. All right. Back green again after that short little cut. Dale Earnhardt's up to third. Wow, here comes the Intimidator. Right away, here's a this seat I have of Dale Earnhardt, or seat cushion, I should say. It's been passed down. And Michael Walter. Jerry, an update on the Mark Martin car. One of the unfortunate like things Peter's about to die. Hold on. Mark Martin Martin's in a brand new race car. And he says he has a very significant brake problem. The brakes are very, very soft. And it can really bleed the brakes and pipe as much. They came in twice during that caution flag to bleed the brakes. Mark is just ready to get back to the crew. The brakes are still awfully soft. He has very little Flat fetish. <laughs> Not really, but a foot cam uh, for the people that do have foot fetishes. Maybe. Comment down below if you have a foot fetish or not. Yeah, that Strickland fell back a bit, but Ernie Irvin and Brett bodine has been moving up. Same thing as Allison. Yeah, Al Kalick is just staying up there, bro. The temperature distribution. They took it off the car and measured it. 170 on the outside. That's cool that they're talking about that. NASCAR. We need to have this type of reporting <laughs> nowadays, like they used to. Yep, John was a legend too. I enjoyed watching races with him reporting. The 12th position and another Napa Field summary for you. Again, we try to do this every 15 minutes or so. Yeah, got a leaderboard, so see where everyone's at. Last completed lap. Bernhardt keeps trying, 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 and he, he may have him. He may have position. Daryl Walsh has moved up to 10th. Wow, Michael Mark Walsh, we know he's almost a lap down earlier. He's in the top 10. Dale Jarrett, Rudd, Schrader's falling back. Bill Elliott's falling back. Well, Bill Elliott's trying to work his way back up. He spun earlier. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the top 10. Mark Martin, yeah, Mark Martin fell back really far. <laughs> Mark is, yeah, a lot of those guys have been a lap down or multiple laps down in previous races. Then there's Patty and Marlin. We got into that wreck early. There's a 28 car. Looks like he may be gaining. Oh, here comes Brett Bodine. Oh, bump. Bodine. Finally Walsh received some Bristol bumping. And, and uh, maybe Walsh might have a tire down. Urban, I don't know. Pass. We'll see. Rusty but Brett Wallace. definitely got to the side of Rusty there. Rusty's car is just not right now. Uh, if that set of tires, if they got on, apparently not quite as matched as well as the set he had on before and you don't know that till you get the tires on the car and get out there in competition you can measure them and you know you know how they measure up but when you get heat at them they don't always grow the same size and we'll remind the fans again these are bias fly tires they're running here so stagger comes into play all right michael watch with another pass he's got a 
rocket in that thing. And that Pontiac. Daryl. It'd be cool to see Daryl and Michael battle for position. Could have very well happen soon if Mike if Michael just holds off Hutt Strickland and Daryl get by Terry. I tell you, somebody that's looking pretty impressive here now is, is Morgan Shepard and the Wood Brothers that go forward. You know, he made a pit stop. A while and there's back. Morgan Shepard. This is a really cool onboard view, like that's for sure. A lot of them, a lot of like the Brist onboard views from the 90s are just position. so cool. So he has come all the way from the back to the 13th. The Wood Brothers car always runs good. Yeah, we're looking, we're seeing the same view that Morgan sees going down in turn three. Closes up right on the back bumper of Dale. Dale Jarrett, that is. Yeah, the other Dale was way on out there in second place. Yeah, well, and this, I, I feel like this will probably be like, there'll be a lot of long green flag runs. Alright. There's Dale Earnhardt in second. He got by Rusty and... At lap 30 was yeah, 13th, moved I, I said this at the beginning of the stream that Daryl Earnhardt would probably end up finishing somewhere in the top five or top ten. He's really good at Bristol. Let me check the chat real quick. Apologize if I missed any messages. But Alan Kulwicki continues to have command of this race. He has led just about every lap from the drop of the green flag, was the pole sitter of this event, and if he should go on to win this race, he will pick up a Unical bonus money, $22,800. Wow, that's a lot of money Big back money in. Lost when Bill Elliott won the race in Richmond from the pole position, 197000 or something was the Unical challenge then. A lot Ooh, of trouble here on turn four. Oh. Most of crash. Dick Trickle did everything but crash. Wow. I mean, he had a really close save at Atlanta, too, where he just, like, got really loose. Now he's about to get a lap down. Yeah, it's crazy, like, Earnhardt, he, he dominated the, a good portion of the beginning of the 1991 season, then kind of went downhill, but he still had enough points to win the championship. Here's some traffic, now this may be worth, because Jeff Bodine in the 15 car certainly does not want to go a lap down. He's not going to make it easy for Kowicki to get by. Oh my, what a save that was by Jeff. Wow. He almost got turned around. He was blocking the leader, and I mean, I wouldn't be surprised he turns him, but that was crazy. That was a nice save, though, I'm not going to lie. Coming up on 100 laps completed here. Not 100, Bristol about one fifth through. Kowicki, the leader. We'll be right back. I had to check my phone, so I apologize for not talking for a little bit. This is interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and yeah, this is the raw satellite feed, so we're probably yeah, not going to hear any one talking for a few. Yep, here comes Dale to the inside, looking for the lead. He's going to get him because Jeff Bodine's holding everyone up. <laughs> he's holding people up too at Darlington too. I don't think he's making he's making too many friends so far this season. You know, he dumped Daryl at Darlington. He's holding people up. Oh, we got blowing engine. Is that Dave Marcus? No caution? Oh, Dale just punted Jeff out of the way. Oh, we got a wreck. Rick Mask. Man. All right, Dale. <laughs> Dale's going to... Uh, I think Dale knows Jeff at the line to put him a lap down. 
But Jeff Bodine's acting like a menace to society right now. He's just blocking all the leaders. He's not making many friends out there, is he? Who's on top? Welcome back to Bristol International Raceway. Under caution once again for his fifth. As Alan Wicked has makes a push on and off pit road for Buell Earnhardt, who had just taken the lead moments ago to lead his first lap of 1990, getting service from the Goodrich Co. They changed right tires already, now changing left side tires. You see a wide there. Davey Allison zooming by. Allison just nips. Brett Bodine, they see the second car off pit road. But remember, Alan Wicked came to the lead. Out second. No tire change. Because of a spin involving Rick Mast in the backstretch, he's okay. He spun and uh, I don't think they have a replay of it. I wouldn't be surprised because they were on commercial break. Like considerable contact with the retaining wall. I'll be right back. Just Just throw away that, my plate from Dale Earnhardt had passed Alan Kowicki to lead his first lap of 92, and this is how it occurred. Well, Kowicki was caught in traffic. Jeff Bodine, he'd been trying to pass him for a couple of laps to put him a lap down. Earnhardt and Kowicki went on the high side trying to get around, and Earnhardt took the low side, went around, took the lead. But now, because of the fact that Kowicki only got fuel, he's going to be... He just showed the replay of Jeff Bodine blocking Earnhardt. With Earnhardt running second, then Davey Allison, Brett Bodine. Darryl Comment Austin down Austin below if you think that Jeff Bro Jeffrey laps. Bodine's going to get taken out now. sometime. Soon. I wouldn't be surprised. Both four car made a chassis adjustment and they left the ratchet in the car seat yeah. on the left rear. If one of the window. if if that happened nowadays where a driver was doing that to leaders, they would immediately get like parked for two laps. Just knowing how soft and this sport has become. That's just being honest with you. I think that's literally what would happen. Alright, back green. Out of Chef Bodine. <laughs> He's a lap now. I think Kawicki won the lap down too because he pitted before that happened, but if not, I'm wrong. But Davey's really muscling Earnhardt here trying to get the spot. And Earnhardt's holding strong on the outside lane. Wow. That was a power move by Dale. And he gets in front of him. Meanwhile, those two cars between Kowicki and Earnhardt are allowed down as Jeff Bristol and Jeff Bodine trying desperately to get back in the lead. Jeff Bodine had a race with Earnhardt to the caution flag, but lost a lap. Come on, Dale, move him out of the way. <laughs> he just, I imagine he just spins him out. I wouldn't be surprised because he is an intimidator after all. He probably real, wanted to wreck him. All right. Just got underneath him, didn't it? Oh, he little scrape. Nothing too crazy, though. Yep, there goes Daryl. Daryl's moved up, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I posted that on my Instagram of uh, Daryl Waltrip's interview after he got wrecked by Jeffrey Bodine. It was really fun. It's kind of funny because he was just like, he was wanting to, you know, say some things he shouldn't say. But he's like, I'll tell you what really happened down there. And then he goes, that little dirt just took us out. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. It's pretty funny, though. I'm not going to lie. But it's not, I'm not laughing because of him being wrecked. I'm laughing because of the way he responded in the interview. Uh, Dara, yeah, so Quickie is in the lead if Earnhardt's in second. Quickie's just running away from everybody. Car's really strong. And we all know, and we all know, uh, Quickie won the championship this year, but, you know, I, I've been really wanting to watch, like, every single race from, uh, a season, and I've, I asked everyone which one I should do, and then everyone was like, 1992. Almost everybody did. It was like 60% of the votes was 1992. Which I'm glad, because I was hoping that everyone would vote that, because I, 
because I've been really interested in seeing all the races from this season. I've seen some of them, like the the Winston, the All Star race. Um, I've seen. I'm, if I'm, well, I've seen the Hooters 500, which was the final race of the season. I've seen that. But most other ones, I haven't seen them, like, all the way through. I haven't watched the entire race, but I've been doing that. Hopefully, I'll be able to get them all done before the season starts this year. That was the goal. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do that. I'd have to do it, like, every single day. And it's hard to do it every day because of work and stuff, but I'm trying. Rusty Wallace is pretty decent short tracks in 1991. There is Mikey. Oh, there's a wreck. Oh, man. Well, I'm not surprised to hear that those two wrecked because They've wrecked a lot in their uh, careers. And 41 car. I always like that scheme. The 41 Kellogg's car. I've always liked that scheme. Paint scheme. Well, we have seen a lot of cautions in this race already. The record number 20 here at Bristol. And already in the first 118 laps, we have had five. Wow. Well, so we might get past 10. My, my prediction was nine. But I would, it's the way it's going, it's going to be more than 10. Wow, Mark Martin has an engine problem. Oh, the carburetor. Well, he's now going to go a lap down, so. Man, it's kind of hurting the points. They had trouble even getting the hood up. They thought maybe the hood, which is buffed a little bit, may have been pushing down somewhat on the air breather, which may have affected the linkage to the carburetor. But that's not the problem. They have the breather off. And now Jack Roush and the rest of the team of the Valvoline car under the hood. But he is losing some valuable time. Even though it's under caution, he has lost at least a lap or more here in the pit. I think the chat's still frozen in my phone. I'm trying to update it on here, but if not, then I apologize. This is Greg Saxon, the yellow car, Ted Musgrave in the white car, Saxon, the Kellogg's Horn Flakes, the 55 cars, the Jasper Angels car. I don't know what happened going in turn one. First time we see them, they're going around and around. The, what was the left rear tire was flat on Saxon's car then? Yeah, and of course he has been in the pits and has that squared away. Ted Musgrave as well is back out on the racetrack. You know, Mark Martin was telling me Friday that this car missed from the time they took it off the truck. There has been a miss in this car. Every I just realized time. something. I may have forgot to record. Start pressing record. If so, then this isn't, this isn't going on YouTube. We'll see. I mean, sometimes I'm able to download my streams, but I usually record them. I forgot to record. Man, I can't believe I did that. Ah, I just slapped myself in the face. Well, fortunately, the caution came out for him. They were able to come in and check the right side tires, put on two new right side tires, and also pull that fender away. So a big break. Yeah, he does have some damage. Billy Eagle told me this morning the hardest part of their job this year has been keeping their heads up because luck has not gone their way. That accounted for the smoke that we saw coming from the right front of that car. We're about to go back to green. Wow, they really got a good start there. They just blew by a lap cars. Davey Allison, Brett Bodine, and Daryl Waltrip are your first five. Well, Kowicki got himself a good jump, so he didn't have to... That was a good start by Aaron Hart, because he had to get out of the lap car, so he has a shot at Kowicki, because Kowicki's been pulling away from everybody so far in this race. Wow, this is a pretty interesting shot here. Can't really see much, but... And here's Kyle Petty just sending it to the outside. Oh wow, quick reflexes there, he kind of got loose. 
Mawicki and Earnhardt are up front, and Dale is right on the back bumper of that Hooters Ford. Yep. Another field summary for you as in just a moment. Get ready to look for your favorite driver and see where he is running at the end of 100. Right up against the wall. Davey, another strong well, run for him so far. See the stands, the stands like completely packed, like sold out. Daryl Watchup's up the fifth. He's on the move. Wallace fed on the seventh. Kyle Petty's up to tenth. And what happened to Michael Walter? He was up there now and then he fell back again. I think it's because they're fixing the damage, but Elliott's 15th. And Irvin, wow, I don't know what happened to Irvin. He, he was up there too, now he's in 16th. Mark Barnes three laps down because of the carburetor problem. Yeah, mass he wrecked. Marcus had an engine issue. A lot of drivers and crew members were talking about Doug down in the pits this morning. Doug had a very serious sprint car crash at Lakeside Speedway in Kansas City on Friday night. We did receive the latest information today, and he does have burns over 30% of his body. He has a fractured vertebrae oh, wow. and concussion and has a long road of recovery. He also inhaled some uh, firefighting material. Huh. And, uh, I didn't know about that. So we'll keep you updated on Doug Wilkane. The side of that 12 car driven by Hutt Strickland that is owned by Bobby Allison has pop on the side of it in remembrance of Pop Allison. Of course, uh, Hutt's wife, Pam. Man, did Petty just, Kyle Petty just moved him up there, took that spot. I actually have a die cast of that number 12 Hutt Strickland car. Nice spot. I really was hoping to see him win a race, or hope that he would have won a race in his career, Winston Cup career. I don't think he did. And the 21 car of Morgan Shepard, I, I think he got caught up on the high side. He, uh, Kenny Schrader was you can tell his car just wants to go high. He's struggling a far handling car at the moment. Yeah, I don't believe that car is at the car right now. He's been really running strong there a while ago, but maybe maybe it's getting on that high side wasn't the coach problem with Morgan Shepard. Because the group that he was racing with, Kenny Schrader, Dale Garrett, and the car number four of Ernie Irvin, they reported that the right from. front tire may be flat on that 21 car. Okay, you can see him drift up in the turn, Vinny, and uh, that would cause the car to push a little bit. You ever see Sachs and Bill Elliott right behind Sachs trying to get by there's the Wood Brothers crew trying to figure out if he's going to make a pit stop or not. Well, let's watch him work the wheel here. Yeah, you can tell he's just diving really deep in the corner. And he might be opening the inside lane up for someone to dive underneath at some point. You tell, look how far he's turning his hand, like his arms. He's just turning his arms all the way down. It's crazy. It also shows you how hard it is to drive a Winston Cup car. Now NASCAR Cup Series car. Oh, what happened to Hut? Early pit stop. Or another one? Yeah, he's going to go at least two laps down. Maybe more. There's Derek Pope. Closed up. As we said on the radios, you don't worry about the stagger, but you do on the bias fly, and you're not really quite sure exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, Shepard's going to go a lap down eventually. So they're going to ride it out as long as they can, but right now, they just think it's a problem with the stagger. The boy is going to go a lap down before long, John, because Alan Kowicki is coming up on him very quickly back there. And coming back into the hunt is Richard Petty, who was involved. Oh, Richard Petty's back on the track. Richard Petty goes back in competition. 
Well, that thing's considerably shorter than it was, huh? <laughs> Whoa! There goes Shepard. Yeah, Shepard's got at least two laps, too. Back to the pits, John Turner. Well, as you pointed out, he was very close to going a lap down, so they will go ahead and bring Morgan in. It will be a right side change only. Eddie Wood getting that right front tire off. It does look like it's uh, still inflated, though. It doesn't look to be flat. We'll check that out. They get the right sides on. The car is down, and Morgan is away. And the problem yeah, the chat's not updating for some reason. Right I don't know why. A couple of drivers experiencing problems here as Morgan Shepard goes back down on the Either that or just no one's commenting. I don't know. <laughs> My phone's glitching a lot, so I'm trying to read the chat on my phone. I know a lot of y'all are probably like, "Why is this race so long?" Well, I mean, they used to run Bristol races, and they still do 500 laps, and NASCAR races can be quite long, depending on how many laps there are, cautions, stuff like that, but. Davey just got by Dale and now he's trying to get by Kawicki. Yep, we're almost at the hour mark. <laughs> and tonight's the national championship game, cross football, so I was going to start the stream at 3.30, so it'll be done by the time that starts. And, yeah, I don't Honestly, I don't know who's going to win, but I want Georgia to win. Uh, comment down below who you, who you think is going to win the game tonight, Georgia or Alabama. Winston Cup race at Bristol International Raceway on ESPN Speed World today. 153 laps old. Morgan Shepard made the pit stop. He dropped a 21st position. Mike says Alabama. Oh, we got a wreck. Turn number three in Bobby Hamilton. Bobby Hamilton. Bobby Hamilton. Yes, he did. And there's a Ooh, facing the, the wrong direction. Rolling around over there. He's sitting right in the middle of the racetrack. These guys are trying to beat the seven car back to the start finish line. And Bill Elliott and Derek Coke both did. They were about to go a lap down. We'll see yeah, the replay in a minute. Bill Elliott because running back in 16th position, he was very close to going a lap down. We'll replay this incident involving Bobby Hamilton. He's come down. To, oh, he makes some contact. Yep, he hit the wall and then uh, Ricky Rudd got wall. into him. And now he goes up and spins around. And once again, backs in the wall. Now... Here comes a tire off someone's car. Is that off Rudd's car? Where's this tire that's rolling down the racetrack? Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, pit road becomes very active again, and Jerry Punch is right there. This is a major break for Alan Kowicki. He had just radioed to Danny Glad and Paul Andrews, his crew, that he thought he had a right side tire going down. The tires were worn out. Remember, he had not changed tires since lap 60, that mandatory caution that NASCAR had for the chassis adjustment. So he's now welcome to the yellow flag as they have changed right side tires and now left side on the Hooters Restaurant Sport Thunderbird. Our leader getting a yeah, leader's the coming in for pits the again. Oh, that was close. I don't know who won that off, but Dale Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt must have. Davey Allison and Daryl Walter out of the pits. Earnhardt, by virtue of him being the Winston Cup champion, gets to pit in the very first one down toward turn one, and therefore it's not a very long distance to get to that line that determines how you line up coming out of the pit. So Earnhardt will have the advantage when we come back. Someone just sent me a really weird Remain video. Under our sixth caution of the day here at Bristol. Huh, people? A crash up in turn number one has slowed the field again. 
Good grief, I keep getting spanned by people, bro. Here's Bobby Hamilton coming out of corner number two, making contact with the wall back there. And Rudd, he had, he slowed people down tagging back, me and, and stuff that has stopped, nothing to do with... And then he spins all the way down into turn three and up against the wall, and you can see a tire came off of it. It doesn't look like, it looks like the outer tire has just come off of the rim. Exactly, but he drove the car around. I looked and had hmm. tires on it, so he must have knocked off the right front and the car right I need to charge my airline. phone. Here's from the in-car camera oh, shot. Where's the charge? Over here somewhere. There it is. He kept doing some wow, onboard view of that wreck. The There's the tire. Ooh, and uh, who was it? Dale Jarrett just missed it. The main thing is the 94 car of Labonte just missed the 68 car of Bobby Hamilton. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Jerry Punch, who is uh, in the Alan Kowicki pits. Well, it's sometimes better to be lucky than good, but Alan Kowicki is both today. He's been very good and very lucky. Let me show you these right side tires. The yeah. right rear tire rubbing significantly. Trying to get they had to pull some of the fender out, but also now. the right front tire All right. rubbing. In fact, they put a spacer it's crazy. on the right front tire. He did not have a tire going down. He had a tire being chewed up by his own fender, so a break for Alan Kowicki, our early leader. And boy, there is not much rubber on the outside of that, that tire. It doesn't take a whole lot of rubbing until you're right through the fabric. A quarter of an inch maximum is the thickness of those tires. And another field summary. This one brought to you by Autolite. Bernard back in the lead. Again, and Mike had picked, the uh, Mike's been the only one active in the chat, but uh, he uh, he picked Darren Waltrip to win, and right now Darren Waltrip is in third. Extra work putting that spacer in there took a little extra time. Oh, Kawiki fell Dillon back a little bit. Kawiki's pretty much led almost the entire race and up until this point. Still in the lead lap. Numbers to the right are laps down for that particular car. And Marcus in car number 71 is listed as back in. Brings her down off there the we go. And here we go again. Green, green, green. Let's go back racing. Here at Bristol watching the Food City 500. Oh, wow. Morgan Shepard really pressing Earnhardt here, trying to get back on the lead lap. Trying to get by him. He will use the bumper. You can tell his car's still a little bit loose. Whoa, that was close. Huh. Looking back at Davey Allison. If Darrell Walker could change four tires, he had a fantastic pit stop because he was moving a long time. I like the four Thunderbird, Thunderbird cars. I always thought they were really cool. They gained uh, on several pit stops here today, picked up several positions. And he moves up right on the back bumper of Morgan Shepard. Good bumper cam shot. Looking back from Morgan Shepard to Davey Allison as he tries to go inside now in the back stretch. He's trying to get by him, but he can't. <laughs> Just blocking. Waltrip, meanwhile, in third spot, has won 11 times. Waltrip and Davey had an incident at Bristol, I think, in 1990 or 91. The they got together at Bristol. He's right behind Davey. Yep, there he goes. Morgan well, Shepard just blocking him. Do it! Yeah, Pulling at Jeffrey Bodine like he Bodine was doing Bodine. earlier. He's, he's, he's blocking them. Hugging the inside lane, he can't get by him. He's smart. He'll be right there. And Shepard's car seems to have gotten better though after the adjustments they made a couple pit stops ago. Whoa, he got loose. And there goes Petty underneath, capitalizing off of the loose. Finally, Davey's getting underneath Shepard. And here comes Daryl. Now Daryl can have a better chance again by Davey. I 
VW's pit stop, but what I wanted to mention was the fact that I spoke with him before the race, and he was in the best spirits I've seen him in a long time. He told me, he said, hey, Doc, that's not the same car we came here with on Friday, but the sheet metal is the same, but we changed the rear end, the engine, the spring, the shock, the steering wheel, everything we changed. Hey, it might work, it might not, but I'm, I'm feeling good about today. I think we're going to be awfully strong. And I believe his prediction is uh, pretty much on, right off the money. I think you're right, as uh, Waltrip now runs just behind Davey Allison, who is in second position. And John, you can tell us about the tires. It's been a couple of amazing four tire changes. I'm telling you what, Bob, they were in and out so quick, I barely had time to blink. But talking to the crew, they said Daryl has the car just the way he likes it. He's going to sit in that third spot right now. Right yeah, around. it's probably going to be a long green flag run. It's probably what's going to happen. You bet it is. He has won so many times just being cagey like he is right now, running up front but not at the front of the pack. Now he started 16th, he moved up to 15th on lap 30, then to 10th, then to 5th, and now at the end of 175 laps. Oh, Davies, he underneath Dale, almost there. Davey Austin goes in here, we go back to Rusty Wallace, Kenny Schrader, and Ernie Irvin, Dale Jarrett. That's 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. And they are at least... Uh, half a lap, maybe a little more. Yeah, they're a little more than a half a lap behind the leaders. They've been caught in some lap traffic back there and had a tough time getting around them. Now, oh, there goes Ken Schrader. Here comes Kenny Schrader down on the wow. inside. Here comes the four cars. This shows you again the, the advantage of the inside lane as Rusty Boss is just falling back. Three positions and a half a lap. And there's Jeffrey Bodine and Michael. It looks like Mark Martin has some damage on his front of the car. Oh! That was a near wreck. Yeah, Rusty, something's happened to his car. He is definitely off the pace. And Rusty was up front, and then now he's about to go a lap down. Davey's inside Dale for the lead. No surprise, Davey's been pretty dominant so far in the season, leading live last points leader. Then Bob Repodine gets by Dale. The 26 and three car, three car of a history. And Rusty, I'm sure, is pretty upset because he had a car that could win the race today. It'd be really hard for him to come back now. He's going to lose like two laps. Nice for that. Uh, I might come back later. It's cool, man. Understandable. Hopefully, I'll be able to put this on YouTube. And now they're in lap traffic. The defending champion of the race. Meanwhile, it's Davey Allison now out front with Daryl Walter wanting running second and Brett Bodine. And it appears as if Dale Earnhardt has lost the handle and he's coming in. Dale Earnhardt comes in for a pit stop. All right, we're approaching halfway. They're laughing. <laughs> what are they laughing about? What he lose? Just one lap or two. Yeah, I 
is a good battle up front between Davey Allison and Daryl Waltrip for the lead. Dale Earnhardt, the third car there, who now is passing uh, Daryl Waltrip, just came in for a pit stop. But look at him on those fresh tires. Yeah, he lost two laps in the pits, so that puts him back. He got one of them back right there. And as Davey went high, Daryl tried to get under him, but couldn't quite make the move. Ted Musgrave, the white 55 that the cars are going by. And also in this battle, and don't count uh, Brett Bodine out of that Quaker State Ford. He's running third and sticking right with Walter and Allison. Let's go down to uh, Jerry Punch, who has more on that Earnhardt pit stop. Well, another scheduled pit stop for Earnhardt for a cut right rear tire. Remember, they are heading the bias fly tires. Not the you, the yeah, country, yeah you can see the cut. A puncture wound here in the right rear tire. A small little opening. The tire was going down. Earnhardt had to change right side tires. He was also held 15 seconds in the pits by NASCAR for being too fast coming out. Wow, so that really cost him. You can see the NASCAR official there holding Dale. That's crazy. Yeah, that pretty much it. That pretty much took him out of contention. I know you're not happy about that. Yeah, I remember it did, you know, he came back, so. Maybe Allison still leads. Daryl Walker right there with him. Brett Bodine is third. And in fourth place is the car number seven of Alan Kowicki. And Alan is, is back, oh, about uh, five or six seconds, I guess, behind the leaders. Kyle Petty is currently running in fifth, and he's right on the back bumper of Alan Kowicki. About 55 more laps will be at the halfway point to enter the Gillette Halfway Challenge Sweepstakes. Dial 1-900-436-7000 before the halfway lap. It'll cost you 95 cents and you have to be 18 at least. If you are called back during today's race, you can name the driver. Who yeah, they've been doing this last challenge. couple of races too where you basically guess their pick who you think is going to be at the halfway point and you can win something. UTC code from a Gillette product. A halfway challenge coming up in just a little over 50 laps. That was a new product that GM had that for a second. Benny. <laughs> I'd call somebody real quick. <laughs> see if they'll respond. <laughs> well, here's Bill Elliott about to go a lap down to Davey Allison. Oh, wow, Bill Elliott is about to go a lap down. Caution came out. Now he does officially go a lap down. Well, you know, you talk about the, the person of the uh, Elliott Express being derailed, and if it could happen at any place, it probably would be at Bristol. And it appears as if it has been derailed. Now. Harry Gant in car number 33 has picked up a position, just going to sixth, passing Terry Labonte. Well, Gant was up to fifth a while back, and he lost about three positions. Bob, he really slipped bad over in turn two, but then he got it gathered back in and has been moving back up through there. Well, he troubles for the 21 car, Morgan Shepard. He says he feels the right uh, side tires are going down. And again, you can see how the car pushes as it goes through the corner. Well, they've had a tough break here today, but with the... There's Richard Petty, we said. He uh, crashed earlier in the race. He's back in the race. About a hundred yeah, Walker this has been a long green flag run. And then schedule pit stop for him. He's had his problems here today as well. He was one of the drivers that was on the lead lap. In fact, he was running in the 13th position. But now he'll... Yeah, playing the windshield. After changing all four tires, so he'll probably go two laps down. Another auto light summary this is as of the last lap Michael Walter yeah Dale Earnhardt <laughs> he's probably three laps down probably Rusty Wallace is right in front of Michael Walter seems Walker. yeah he's now up down Earnhardt's one about to go two if he gets passed again I think Earnhardt would probably work, be able to work himself back up I mean it, we're almost at the halfway point. He should be able to work his way up to We saw Michael Walker in the pits. We understand that the left rear tire was flat on his Pontiac. So he went and changed all four. This is Chad Little running right behind the leader. And Daryl's just been falling. Dave, he hasn't been able to get by him. There's all these lap cars. Yeah, Chad's just falling back. He seems really slow. The right rear on Michael Walter's car is the one that went down. The right rear. Good old DW. We see him just up at the left of our screen. He's right on the back bumper of Baby Allison. He might have that Western Auto. Oh, Daryl, what are you doing up there, son? Daryl's trying to, you know, he's trying to find every way to get by Davey. 
you can't get under him, so he's trying he's trying to go up high. Normally he likes to run uh, down low on the racetrack. John is uh Daryl complaining that the car's loose. Yeah, Bobby, exactly right. Jeff Hammond And there's Mikey's brother behind him, so we will get to see Daryl and Mikey battle for uh twice on the track. But now it's position because Michael Michael's a lot down. racing that we've been following all year the Bill Elliott winning streak and that doesn't appear to be continuing today and of course the Ford winning streak and although Ford is leading with Davey Allison Carol Walter is right there in the Chevy Morgan Shepard back in the pits and on the schedule stop we recorded a little bit ago that he thought he had a right front tire going down again so he is in the pits and as it goes forward getting right side tires they'll come around now and change the left side tires Tenth consecutive race that Davy Allison has led, dating back to Charlotte of last year, and here is wow. the four dominance that has been. Yeah, I know that this was their year, and it's crazy they've led that much in the first couple races, but of the lead laps they have led and that's gone since Charlotte. That's gone back to 1991. Huh? We'll see. I wonder when that streak's going to end. Because the uh, first race season was State 2500, Davey Allison won, then Elliott's won the last four. This is the sixth race of the season. Mr. September, Harry Dent. Heard a noise in the laundry room. Remember, he made a pit stop a while ago and got some fresh tires. That's the reason that he's passing Daryl in second spot. Bob, I left Ricky Rudd out. He's in 11th. Mikey actually got by his brother, Daryl. Davey Allison continues to lead as he tries to lap Derry Cope. Oh, bump. Quickie had fallen back earlier because of a bad pit stop, it seemed. Here's Petty also passing Bill Elliott. So we're nearing the halfway point. It's lap 216 out of 500 at Bristol International. Oh, I forgot I need to mute because of copyright, maybe. Alright, I want to make sure I don't get copyrighted. All right, it should be good. What was that glitch? Michael just got a lap back. Mm-hmm. Does that put him back on the lead lap? No, 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 no. No, he's still uh, he's still two laps down. Okay. Because he was about two thirds of a lap down before he came in, and he lost two in the pits. Can't seem to get by him still. It's crazy. Ernie Urban's picking up on Harry Gant. Hmm. He and Jeff about spun coming off the second corner. Hmm. What are you doing? Who? I was Pam in my ear. Winston Cup Racing on this Sunday afternoon on ESPN. The Food City 500. We're live at Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee for race number six in the Winston Cup season for 1992. Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. By Suzuki and your Suzuki. Freaking that's copyrighted music. Ah, don't want to get taken down for that. Still 
Alright, good. Wow, did Michael just get by Davey too? Wow. He tried to get underneath him, but just lost more ground again. There's Jeffrey Bodine who took out Daryl in the last race at Darlington. The longest green flag run so far of the race. Daryl needs to use the bumper if he's trying to get by Davey. Because the lap cars aren't going to help it. He's going to have to get to the inside somehow. And Chad, he's had a poor handling car. He's just been really slow. And he can't seem to control his car off the corners. All right, Daryl's trying to get underneath. Yep, there he goes. He got the inside finally. And DW takes the lead for the first time in the race. Ernie Irvin. Oh, he stalled it. Okay, now he's going. <laughs> and it's crazy how slow the pit road speed limit is, too. At Bristol, it's only 35. Daryl's now trying to get, <laughs> trying to lap down Michael. Here's a big A auto parts on track interval timing Allison and Alan Kowicki, who was running back in fourth position, laps 218 through 222. And huh. So Quickie has Kowicki closed the gap on the leaders. And Quickie led a lot early, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him back up there towards the end. A lot of traffic. Cal Petty's had a pretty good race so far. And Dr. Jerry Punch is in the Daryl Walter pit. Well, you guys were commenting he thought Daryl was just biding his time. That's exactly what he was doing. Jeff Hammond radioed to him about three or four laps. There's Rich hey, Petty with, his, with no hood on and still out there trying to get points. He was in, I think he was like 12th in points heading into his race, even though he hadn't had a good, like, any good finishes really at all so far this season. The halfway mark is approaching very rapidly, and Walter now with about a car length and a half lead over Davey Allison. Oh, that was a bad move. That could have gotten him a pass by Davey, but he got back underneath. Wow, that was a nice move. He went between Michael and the lap car. I don't... It's a 55. I want to say Musgrave, but if not, I'm wrong. Now, 11 laps to go in the uh, halfway point. We'll take a quick break and be back to see who wins the Gillette Halfway Challenge. Copyright music again. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we need a thunderstorm. <laughs> How long is this break? Okay. Next time we have a skip ahead a little bit until the broadcast comes back up. Yeah. Pretty got a nice number view again. Ricky Rose, I go lap now. 
Yeah, you tell Daryl Watson has a really fast car. He's pulled away from Davey. Okay. The America's Cup coming up right after our coverage of the Fleet City 500 at Bristol International. We're on the halfway point now. We are less than four laps from the halfway point at the moment. It is Daryl Waltrip leading this race. Next time around, he'll complete 247 circuits in Sterling Marlin. Is back on the racetrack, very running very slow. Yeah, Marlon wrecked Richard earlier. Petty. He was in the first wreck of the race, and uh, Richard Petty got collected in that as well. Bob just as we came back on the air, we saw Daryl Walton go around Ricky Rudd. Rudd was running in the fifth position, so he is now one lap down. So there are nine cars in the lead lap. And there are Daryl Walker, Davey Allison, Brett Lodine, Alan Swicky, the car number 42 of Kyle Petty, then Harry Gant, Terry Labotti, Ken Schrader, and Dale Jerry are the nine cars that are in the lead lap. One more lap to go to the halfway point. Here's Walter crossing the line, completing lap 249. Less than a half mile to go now, and he'll win $10,000. And one of you out there who have registered for the Gillette Halfway Challenge could win a new Chevrolet Lumina Z34. Here is Daryl Waltrip winning $10,000 in the Gillette Halfway Challenge. And we have a crash. Kyle Petty. What, Kyle Dunn, Petty? Oh, no. Grave, and Bill Elliott all involved. That came right at oh, the Bill. Well, well, there goes Bill. He's going to win five in a row. Rudd, and Kyle Petty hit the wall. He was having a good race. Quite a bit of damage to that Elliott car. Well, I tell you, this will be a break for a lot of them, Bob, because there were a lot of drivers that were slipping and sliding out there wanting to get in and get some fresh tires on those cars. Wow. Considerable front end it's definitely going to be a radiator problem. Seven, Seven caution. I predicted nine today. cautions. And here come those on the lead lap in for a much needed pit stop. Is that was a long green flag run. run. So, he, um, these guys, I'm sure, off. glad here that they finally the take a little breather, or breather, 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 you know what I'm saying? He wins the race off the road. Jeff Hammond, he does get the jack under it. Davey Allison on the bottom of your screen. It will be a four-tire change all the way around. They also made a stagger adjustment. Daryl had said... I, would, I was going to turn on my, my heater in the ring. It's being cold, but it would mess up the audio, so I can't. What in the world was that? There's a tractor in the way. Oh, Harry Gant got off before Daryl. Daryl had a slow stop. Davey Allison came down pit road, and when he hit the brake pedal, the car slid almost all the way against the pit wall. The crew had to dash back out of the way. There was maybe six inches between the left side tires and the pit wall. They couldn't change left side tires. They could only oh, change wow. The right they, side that's tires. why he got off early. The Havilland crew will bring Davey back and there was that the tractor the in the middle of the road. Like, bruh. I've never seen this clip before. It's crazy. It's just, the tractor just comes right back in front of the track. Like, there's a pit stop going on. Can you not wait? Or can you not go before? Oh, well, miscommunication. Now they, now they're, Davey's going to have to come in and get right size, and he's going to lose the lead. He's still going to be on the lead lap, though, once he would be able to work his way up, more than likely. I don't think Eric, I think Earnhardt's still two laps down. special look at a very special young man. Now, the owner of this racetrack is Larry Carrier, and what a magnificent job he and his staff have done. I don't think he's the owner of it anymore. complex here in the hills of Tennessee, and you would think maybe his son would be interested in carrying on the tradition yep. here. Back then, see, they, I miss that. Like, like, they had that hill in the, the giant, like, booth and all that, and people could sit on the hill. Just surviving these bull rings, it's just a quite strange question, Larry Carrier. Bristol International Raceway considered a top I'm gonna skip this part. No offense to anybody, but or to the people that they're talking to and all that, but gotta get back to the race and that's what we're here for, but I'll go back and watch this later. I'm going maybe I'm 
In boxing, they usually copyright stuff, so I don't know if they would take me down for that. Oh, Davies now, and his, he might be out of contention now. Yeah, Larry McReynolds. <laughs> it's crazy. Today's his birthday, actually. But he he he, he was understandably upset. Wow, Brett Bodine's in the hold on. Brett Bodine, Harry Gant, Koiki, Terry Labonte, fourth place. Wow, and he's fourth in the standings too. So props to him. Quick, he's back to third. Well, there's a considerable amount of turn as basically yesterday. It's a long green, or uh, long yellow flag period. I'm so used to saying green because of how long the last run was. I'm saying it's probably some radio very issues. I skip this. Daryl Earnhardt's back up to eighth. Okay, we got a replay. And many, many laps ago, this was the reason that the caution came out. Uh, Kyle Petty getting up into the wall. Yeah, he really did pack the wall. Crashing and spinning behind him. But what happened to Bill? That time, they have I didn't see where Bill got his damage from. To go back to racing as you take a look at another Dale Jarrett really strong. Wow, Earnhardt's just shoving his way and trying to get in line. Earnhardt's a lot down. Okay, but he, he can get back on it. He get back on the lead lap. Michael Walsh, I didn't know he's two laps down. He was up there with the leaders, passing them. So Wallace is 5, Martin's 10, Elliott's 13. Wow. 13 laps down, not 13. <laughs> wow. Rick Mass, Petty, 100, some last sound. Well, they wrecked, so we know. Marlon. If Marlon gets enough laps, and he'll probably get by uh, Marcus on the leaderboard. <laughs> that green. He did. Oh no, Daryl! <laughs> he's having such a good race. Now he's having problems. Now Cope really sent into that corner, push whoever that was up high. Ken Trader. There's only a lot of cars lapped down at the end of the race. A lot of people just have mechanical issues and just the green flag runs causing people to get lapped down. It's something you don't you don't see that nowadays. You don't see like a bunch of guys lapped down. But that was what happened with this type of racing back then, you know? Happened a lot in the 70s, 60s, 80s. People, there'd be usually just one guy on the lead lap or two, depending on how long the race was. Harry's falling. Well, he's doing something happens, and Gant comes off the accelerator. Thought he was going to come in for a pit stop, but didn't. He stays out there. Well, <laughs> there goes he, another driver that was up in front, out of contention. Yeah, it's uh, something pretty serious there. Even one cylinder wouldn't have slowed him down. Looks like an axle problem or something, because the way that back rear tire was. John Kernan, what do you know about this? Harry's just radioed in and told Andy Petrie and the crew that the rear. Oh, so I, w I was sort of right. <laughs> oh, 
open, said nothing, then all of a sudden this look of dismay came upon his face. He was not a very happy camper. They are talking things over right now. That's gonna, he's gonna lose points for sure because of that. Now comes down the front straight away and has not stopped yet. We assume he'll pull behind the wall down at the end of pit road there. Yep, there he is and behind the wall. He's going down to his truck with the parts on it to fix the car. Yep, they were, they were positioned sort of between turns one and two with their truck and that's exactly where he's heading. There he pulled in behind the truck. I saw some of the crew scrounging. They're on the back of the truck getting the parts ready to fix the car. Elliott in the pits. He's second in Winston Cup points. Harry Gant has just gone to the uh, truck. Brett Bodine's still in leading. Third position in the Winston Cup points. And there goes Bill Allison. <laughs> Look Bill how damaged this car is. Oh, wow. Have escaped maybe with not too much damage to Multiple cars. Is that Davey? Uh, it was pretty heavy damage to Daryl's car. Ernie Irvin was one of them. Oh, Good grief. Everybody's spinning out. Yeah, there's a lot of oil going into that turn. As Davey went into turn three, I think Quick he spun too. Smoke come out of it, and uh, he slid into the wall. Daryl was right behind him. Ah, Davey, he got in the, oil, the points in leader. The was he was there. having a good he race, and good. he's got involved. You can see the oil, you can see the oil there oh, yeah. on the racetrack, boys. A lot of Man, oil. I didn't think, <laughs> I wasn't Davey expecting there to be another wreck for a while, and then here we go, another one. Shepherd spun. The What's this camera shot? Way back into, uh, the beginning it's of just showing three. the sponsors, I guess. That's going in the corner. Yeah, that's where Morgan spun, and all the cars behind Davey Allison got in there all going in the corner. Oh. Darren Walsh may have got a PC. Uh, he ended up hitting Davey. Schrader Ken Schrader, Ernie Irvin. And yeah, Morgan Shepard was spinning. <laughs> Watch Morgan Shepard come into the oil. Whoa! He just caught that right rear. Slip and slide. <laughs> he kept it off the wall, though. And there's Alan Kowicki going through that. Through and uh, Dale Earnhardt, this is the break he needed. He was running right in front of Brent Bodine. Yep. And, man, oh, man. Uh, live change. Live turn of events here. So this is going to shuffle the standings. The way things were going, I wasn't going to think that Davey Allison. I thought that, that Davey Allison would have it. Top five finish, but now he's involved in. Oh, and Daryl Walsh is by the wall. Man, what is going on? I didn't know he got that much damage. Well, he was having a good race, too. Wow. There's only a lot of cars that lap down now. <laughs> he must have hit the wall and then got into Davy. Walter pitting the wall. Ernie oh, Davey blew an engine so is what they said. But there was a lot of smoke. Morgan Shepherd came through. And then there's and oil on the track and, and you know people spinning. Takes a spin. Doesn't hit anything, but Morgan did do a, ha a spin there in turn number four. Now Ernie Irving got a lot of damage. The of this race. And moreover, look at the Winston Cup point standings and look at the guys that have uh, been successful and had trouble here. Davey Allison has had trouble. Bill yep. Elliott has had trouble. Harry Gant has had trouble. Terry Labonte has not. As a matter of fact, Terry Labonte might actually get the, the points lead if he leads a lot. Having trouble also. Let's take a look at the second ten. Quakey will probably move up. Earnhardt will move up. Now, Dale Earnhardt is All these the other guys, but has been had a good yeah. or bad <laughs> race. Mark Martin had trouble. The carburetor. Dick Trickle's been a couple laps down. Well, Harry does manage to climb out of the car and have a somewhat of a smile. Harry, uh, you had a good run going, and then suddenly the car just uh, just slowed down. What happened? Yeah, the oil pump belt broke, and uh, yeah, a lot of rubber built up on the hood. Uh, I didn't I didn't catch it. Of course, you can only run a couple laps, you know. And uh, I guess maybe when I took off, it must have slung it off, and uh, I felt something seizing up when I switched it off, and then it's uh, knocked the bearings out of it, though. But it was running good. Uh, the Skull team done a good job getting us in and out of the pits. And, Tire wire was super. We were kind of just laying in there, you know, to wait for the last hundred laps. Uh, sure I think happen, NASCAR, if I'm correct, is having to go. test at Daytona tomorrow or Tuesday, January 11th. Let's go over and check in with John Curtin, the Davy Allison pit. Jerry, I've caught up with Larry McReynolds, and Davey hit the wall pretty hard, Larry, uh, taking him to the infield care center, I understand. Yeah, he, he did walk to the ambulance, John, but he's complaining about his ribs hurting him. And oh, no, Davey's hurt. To to well, he, I, I've read up on, like, his season and all that. I've watched the documentary, and he did have some injuries in 1992. We had no business back there where we was. You know, NASCAR.
NASCAR had no right to place us back there. They told us we could talk about it after the race, but a lot of good that does now. It's Larry McReynolds, crew chief on Davy Allison's points leading team. Both Allison and Waltrip are behind the wall as a result of that crash. We'll take another break and be back with more from Bristol International Racing. Music, I forgot. Okay. How quick he's second, Ronnie. Almost the same as it was last time. I'm surprised Kenny Schrader's fifth because he was like, I thought he was a lap down earlier. Yep. Earnhardt's up to sixth. I think he got, yeah, he's back on the lead lap. Just gonna skip that. Oh, interview Daryl. You're doing things like, as you said, the uh, rear end had been pushed over. Daryl caught up in something. Uh, Got almost an hour left of, really of the here, race. Yeah, you know, they, uh, so that means there must not be a lot of cautions the rest of the way. I just hope that everybody back home and everybody was watching. Uh, I was really enjoying myself. I was having a lot of fun. Yeah, that's I could tell. He was doing fun. good. He was doing a great job. And all you Western Auto fans and all you DW fans, hang in there. We'll get it turned around. It ain't going real good right now, but it, we'll get it turned uh, around. I don't even it's think he won this season. I'm not sure if he did or not. He might have had one win. Memories from some years ago of running here at Bristol. Man, I mean, I'm physically in the best shape I've ever been in. I got a great race car. I got a great crew. We're just having terrible luck. Boy, if anybody knows how to turn luck around, please call me. I need it. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, at least he's having a, a more quiet and, uh, and uh, funny interview than what did at Darlington when he got wrecked by Bodine. He's in a better mood. But back green. And you can tell there's not a lot of cars out there <laughs> at the moment. Oh, Quickie and Morgan Shepard side by side. Shepard, he, he's been doing better since they made that adjustment, but when they did that and he had to make that green flag pit stop, he got a couple laps down. I didn't think Brett Bodine would be leading this race. I knew he was probably going to have a strong run, but considering he's running well on short tracks this season, I just didn't think he was going to be leading. There's Dale Earnhardt. He's trying to work his way back up to the front. Rusty Wallace was doing good too in the early part of the race, and then he had problems. A lot of contenders got taken out. This token's not a word, but taken out. You know what I'm saying? I'm used to saying took. Yeah, Terry Labonte in 94 seems been really strong. Be cool to see them get a win. Under control at most times and uh, is a good finisher. And he also is very high on the crew that he has. He made some personnel changes during the winter. Pete Wright's back over there now. And Pete and Terry worked together earlier. And of course, they got Snowco sponsorship locked in there that's uh, been real good for them. So they just got a lot of things going. Running, uh, what he running Oldsmobile here today, and uh, he ran a Chevrolet at Daytona. Said he's going to run a Ford at Talladega. <laughs> <laughs> he said, sort of tongue in cheek the other day. He said, said, well, said about time we figure about time we get uh, that Ford belt. Said they'll change the rules and slow them down. He said he sort of laughed. Said we'll still have them covered because we got a Chevrolet and Oldsmobile. <laughs> right now, Dale Jarrett is all over Lamonti. Dale running fourth, and he's had a good race. Labonte, uh, after five races in 1992, he is fourth. Compare that to last year after five races. Boy, a tremendous increase for Terry Labonte. Cars, those cars look awfully good going around the racetrack. Not moving, just hanging right in there. Terry's doing pretty good defending the spot, but, you know, Dale Jarrett's all over him. Cars seem to be running a little bit higher on the racetrack than earlier in the race, Ned. 
Yes, they have moved up just a little bit as Jarrett tried to get a move under Levani going coming off the of turn two. I almost had him. He appears maybe right now he might be just a tad faster than Levani, but he just can't get up there and make the pass. 196 laps to go. Another auto light field summary showing Bodine, Brett in the lead, pulling away as a matter of fact from Alan Kowicki. Six cars. Ken Schrader's last car in the lead lap. And Dick Trickle, another strong run for him. He's had a really good season so far. I thought Stax was like there 10 laps down. They're all still 20. Kyle Petty, he's gotten into a wreck earlier as well. Ernie Irvin did. Yeah, he did. So he Davey Allison. He can't spin to lose a good bit of points. Wow, I didn't think that was that hard of a crash. But he may have a rib injury. I'm correct when I was watching the documentary about Davey. He broke his ribs sometime this season, but I didn't think it was at Bristol. I thought it was like later on in the season. Oh boy, there goes Hutt. He was pretty strong early. He had a really good qualifying spot, and he just fell back. Did they throw the caution? I think they did. Hey, got a notification. Let me see. I'm not able to check the chat on Peter, but let me see on my phone and see if I got a notification here. But the notification was. Gas and goes. John will watch I think it was a you. sub. Paul Andrews and the crew waiting. Alan it's not showing up on my phone, but appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'll check it right now. Hold on. And they are now. Fire Falcon 60. Thank you for the sub or the follow. <laughs> Now, so I'm used to saying sub because of YouTube, but appreciate the following. You know, thank you, to, uh, of course, to everyone who's watching right now. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get this on YouTube as well. I'm not able to see the chat when I'm watching YouTube for some reason. So I do apologize for that. Yep, the ninth caution. I predicted there to be nine cautions in this race, so we've reached that mark. Wow, Bodine, <laughs> he lost the lead on pit road. I think that puts Dale back in the lead, and Dale had fallen back like two laps early. But we're with Paul Andrews, Alan's crew chief. Uh, Paul, the strategy there, I guess the tires are feeling pretty good to him, huh? Yeah, the tires aren't He's good. like, hey, can we spin it? Not really. Like He's not like tires. that. But. We really don't want to change right now. We want to keep everything in You know, it is loud, so they have to be close and all that. We can't do that nowadays because of, you know what? I'm not going to mention it because they'll probably get a notification box down below or an information thing or whatever. Decided to bring it here. It's basically the same car as what we won here with. Uh, well, that's the crew chief of the pole sitter, Alan Kowicki, and kind of a cautious smile at this point in the race, gentlemen. All right, let's take a look at how Dale Earnhardt's car is positioned as they work on the uh, machine. Well, he's drove the car in, and he could not get into his pit because the 26 car is there. So we see the right rear is over the yellow line. And the 26 oh, car he, it was. Back on so that's road. a penalty. 
me a con 4K. Darren Hart might lose another lap. That, 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 that is the key. That the right front is in the fifth where it needs to go. And here is Hunt Strickland's spin from our speed shot. He, he just, just lost it there. Well, he seemed like he was trying to go back down low. We'll say the loose for any Let's skip ahead some. Ken Schrader's actually in the lead, and then there's Quickie in second. Oh, wow, that was a stack up and a half. Ricky Rudd got a lap back. Morgan Shepard, he's been lapped down a lot in this race. Wonder when they were going to come back there. Oh man, Brett Bodine again! Wow, flag, flag, passing, wow. Well, he's going to lose a lap. Maybe we'll see. There he is. You can see him going to the high side. <laughs> Trickle blocked him. The, the, uh, green comes out in or turn. tried to. Almost got into the wall. Well, yeah, Brett, Brett was, uh, too long ago, but yeah, Brett was, <laughs> he's like, I need my spots back. Two pit stops and, and it cost the him. Karma. Is it? Didn't make the pit stop, Bob, on this uh, caution. He was running about fifth, I think, or sixth, and uh, came in and... Oh, it did not come in, so he stayed out there. Apparently felt good with the tires he has on. Yeah, on board of Mark Martin. He had a carburetor issue earlier, and he's like, it's a lot of laps down. Bob, I just talked to Richard Brim, the crew chief. He says, hey, we only had about 30, 35. Oh, there goes Morgan Shepard underneath him. Tire wear all day long. Car felt good to Kenny. They figured that uh, there's going to be another caution before they run out of gas. So they decided to stay out there, pick up a little uh, not a lot of time left. So that means they must have went. They probably went green flag the rest of this race, maybe, if that's the case. Either that or Smith decided to edit a good bit out. Wow, they're trying to get 28 back on the track. Anything to hold on to those point standings and to gain as many as you possibly can. So we'll look for that 28 car to possibly return to the race with a relief driver in the next few minutes. Looking out the back of more. After the race ends, we're going to look and see uh, some stats on the race and the results and all that. And then, uh, yeah. If they have the interview on here, we'll listen to whoever won the race's interview. Wow, quick, he almost got in the end. The six cars that are in the lead lap, Schrader, Kowicki, Earnhardt, Jarrett, Labonte, and now Rudd. And I miss, I miss seeing, I wish, well, I wasn't alive at the time, but I wish I was in the, I was able to see the racing in person back in the 90s because it looked just so fun to watch. And it's fun watching old races here on YouTube. I'm glad that they're on YouTube. And for those that are just now joining or started watching late, uh, I'm basically, I've, uh, I've been watching the entire 1992 season. Um, so I've watched the first five, and then this is the sixth race this season, the Food City 500 at Bristol. And, yeah, it's been a pretty good season so far, and we all know that what happened in the season final, which makes it the greatest race in NASCAR history. But, you know, I was, I was, um, I'm glad to be able to watch every single race this season, and I made a post saying which season y'all want me to watch, and 60% of the votes was 1992. Here's Earnhardt trying to come on the inside of Hutt Strickland. 
Hunter <laughs> is uh, running in seventh place. He is one lap down. There, Kowicki's on the inside of Schrader. Got position. Can he maintain? Is it turn number three? Yeah, he, he does. Yep, there goes Allen. Allen Kowicki goes back in the lead again. He was our pole sitter. And Allen led a lot early, and then he went back. He fell back a good bit, but he's worked his way back up out front now. And then there's Dale Earnhardt, who's back in the top three. Schrader stuck on the outside lane. He's going to keep falling back. I think Schrader's tires are they're pretty hot right now. And I think Bodine's now a lap down. Dale Jarrett's on the lead lap. It's already five o'clock. Rick is putting a lap on uh, Ricky Rudd. I mentioned a moment ago that he had gotten back in the lead lap. Now Rudd goes a lap down again. So there's five laps, five cars now on the lead lap. Dale Jarrett and, and Hutch Rick would get together a little Ricky bit. Ricky Rudd turn trying to get a lap back. And, uh, Hutch slides high. Jarrett goes under. Alan Colwicky. There's Rick Massey. He wrecked early. Music. Copyright. <laughs> Should be good. Was two tires was over the yellow line. The way that Earnhardt was in there was okay. Do, do we have a picture of Davey in the pits at that time? Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. You have the verbiage on that. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, Heartbreak. this is the Ross highlight feed, so okay. it's showing the yeah. not on air footage as well, well, and you can go still go hear the commentators in the Sorry. background. Yeah. Hmm. Have you got the air conditioner on back there? It's a little warm, huh? Doesn't work. <laughs> we had the heater on not long. Ago. I mean, <laughs> pretty now the sun though. coming in is getting hot in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cold because I don't have my heater on. Check the chat. See what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he may take over second here a bit. Forty-five out of 500 laps in the Food City 500 completed here at Bristol. The leader of the race is Alan Kowicki. Car number seven, the Hooters Ford. Second is Earnhardt, and third is Dale Jarrett. Well, here's Jerry Punch with Davey Allison. Davey has walked down to the infield care center. First of all, Davey, uh, how do you feel? Well, I'm a little bit sore right now, but everything's okay. Uh, took a pretty good shot up there. I don't know what happened. I know a lot of people I say I look like Davey Allison or Jeff Gordon. I get that a lot. <laughs> Do I, look, do I look like Davey? I understand they're working to try to get the car back in the race. I know you're you're not going to be a candidate to get back in it, but the, maybe someone could save some points for you. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit too sore to get back in it right now, but maybe we can get Harry Gann or something. Davey was a legend, man. I, it's Harry unfortunate, you know, he, was, he know. passed away in that Davey plane crash. And and we never got to see... Uh, never got to see... 
Um, yeah, he. I feel like he could have won championships. He was, you know, one of the greatest drivers of all time, regardless. I mean, he was dominant whenever he was racing. He's an absolute legend. Seventy nine. That's a that's a very slow average speed, but then again. It's Bristol, there's a lot of wrecks. Martinsville is similar to that in regard to average speed throughout the years. I would take my sunglasses off. I'm inside. <laughs> Mechanic of the Year standings finds Tim Brewer from Bill Elliott's team on top, followed by Larry McReynolds, Andy Petrie, Steve Larry Mack. And it's his Kirk it's Kelby. his birthday today. Shout out, Larry. I tried wishing him a happy birthday on Twitter and you know all that. I don't know if he'll see it, but you know, absolute legend. My hair's getting long. I just noticed that. It's getting pretty long in the back. I might need to cut it soon. Michael Watcher, he's been pretty decent despite being like lapped down or two. He's been able to pass the leaders a couple times. Wally Dombeck's moved to 17th. I, yeah, I'm surprised that. Well, I'm not surprised, but I'm, I didn't know. I didn't realize that Chad Little be 52 laps down, but he did have a really bad end length bar about 100 laps ago. But Marlon's out now. They were trying. They were thinking about bringing the. I remember they were saying that he was probably going to get back on the track. And now he's not, so he's not going to. He is going to finish last. <laughs> He hasn't had a good race at all. I mean, the the last couple races, he just he he starts decently, but he gets he gets gets a lot of laps down. He just gets blown by. Dale. And Brett was leading until he had that mistake. He was trying to pass cars on the. He was trying to pass cars before the start restart, and he it cost him. Yep, another great run for him. I have his paint scheme, uh, die cast of his paint scheme. Then I have that one as well, the Terry Labonte 94, one of my favorite cars. I also like the 22 Maxwell House car by Stone and Marlon. I really enjoyed that paint scheme as well. Chad Little. Yeah, you just tell. He's so much slower than anyone else. He definitely wasn't a. He's not. He wasn't like a Quinn Half, but the way how slow he is compared to everyone else is is very similar to Quinn Half when he was driving the double zero last season. Or in the 2021 season. Eliminate car and the country time in car camera also. 
They took the lemon off of that car this week. Oh, that, they, they used to have a lemon. He off wrecked there, earlier yeah, too. Took that off. They said it happened a little bad luck. More you see the damage. The wreck of the year last year, and boy, they have had some tough breaks this year. Here's Greg Stacks. Then Greg Stacks got to an incident earlier as well. Maureen Shepard, the Citgo Ford. We also have an in car as he drives up underneath Greg Stacks, tries to get by. Very him. close. Yeah, dive it in there. Gonna yeah, take it. 55 Musgrave. He's about to get lapped again. I'm glad they showed like all the cars on the track. That's pretty helpful of knowing where they're at. And everyone's just spread out now. It's Ernie Irvin. If Richard Petty, he got into a wreck earlier. Ran into Sterling Marlin. Nowhere to go. Oh no, not Michael. Michael is having a good race. Now he's got, looks like overheating issues. And there's the other one that we did not talk about, but we will now. That's Brad Teague driving the... And Brad Teague, yeah, he, he's struggled a lot. He's going really slow as well. Second James Davison of uh, that season. He didn't lap a lot. He had close to 100 to go. Probably going to go green flag the rest of the way if there's only like 40 minutes left. So. Sterling is driving. I'm going to skip ahead a few. Alright, back with the commentators. Second is Dale Earnhardt in the good red Chevrolet car number three. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty safe to say that it's going to either between Alan Kowicki or Dale Earnhardt's going to win. Just at this point of the race, with all the all the guys that are, a lot of people that are dominating earlier in the race just got taken out, like Davey and Daryl. But there's the Sterling Marlin car back there, too. They didn't have like a garage area there. They're doing in the middle of the infield. You see all the tools on the ground and parks. Used to be real simple. You know, I got to tell you, we talked about the pit stop. And we saw Earnhardt with his right rear sticking over the yellow line a little bit ago. Les Richter drew me a map a little bit ago. A little bit ago. Held up the window. He said it's okay if the driver goes in on that angle. The problem is he can't have both tires over that yellow yeah, line. It's, can't yeah, that was like the start of that penalty. Right NASCAR came more strict with penalties on pit road. Yeah, Dale is catching Allen. Three seconds of Allen Kowicki. Even less than that now as Earnhardt continues to close in. Now, Kowicki has about 71, 72 laps on those tires that he has on. Now, now if I'm Earnhardt, correct, well, I, I know Dale had like one win that season. So, in this season, and I'm pretty sure it was at Charlotte, but I may be wrong. I think it was at Charlotte. Which I haven't watched yet. I'm going race by race. Yep, so he's, he's gaining on them by 0 0.1 each time. Yep, wow, that time he gained even more. Yep, 
checking the interval once again. By well, that time, it moved up by one zero or one tenth. Now it's back to one second. So the interval is being maintained for the most part by Alex Woodkey. Still, still like a hundred to go. So. Be interesting how see. It's going to come down to pitch how you can get off and all that, get off the road first, I think. And, you know, the lap traffic will play a factor, too, since there's a lot of lap traffic. 112 laps to go. Alan Kowicki maintains the lead of the Boot City. Copyright easy. We'll be back. There we go. Skip by that. All right. Derek Cope, uh, he was doing pretty good earlier. Now he's just getting Very well. stuck again. And he's going to get lapped down again. Seven car, yeah. Boy. I'm not so sure I would use that yellow tape on the 68 car. It clashes terribly with the uh, other color. <laughs> I'd leave him in the I'd leave him in the pits if I were that crew. <laughs> he literally just said they said I'd leave it in the pits if I yeah, Wow, he, that was savage. Showing the Gillette challenge thing. Many congratulations, sweepstakes. He correctly accepted for extension. I don't know if I should be showing that number on here because it's probably someone else's number now. I don't know. Yeah, Roy is glad that uh, he stayed home, entered the contest, and knew who was leading at the half. Whoa, point. whoever that was up there got loose. I think that was Hamilton. Z34 will be on his doorstep before too long. Now, another field summary for you as we keep you up to date at least every 15 minutes on. Okay, so Labonte fell down the fifth. Jared's third. Fair fourth. Those are the five cars and the lead lap. Bravo, Don's a lap down, Rudd's a lap down. Yep. Strickland, I'm surprised Strickland's only one lap down. I thought he was like three. He spun earlier and all that. Cope's four laps down at 11th. Wow. Daryl Washer's back out. As Mike's picked the win. Mike said, oh, I think Daryl Washer was going to win. And Washer was doing good until he got into that wreck. And Hamilton's like, Hamilton's still out there and all that, but he's he's literally losing more laps than Allison. Well, he'll get by Allison because Allison's in, still in the garage, but Daryl looks, his car doesn't look that badly damaged. Rusty doesn't want to give it up. He's already like three laps down, he doesn't. Oh, uh, Strickland hit the wall. Man. I like that paint scheme of his. I have the I have a diecast car of his of it. Watch this as we replay from our speed shot. Way up at the top of your frame. Watch carefully. Yeah, he got too high in there and he hit the wall. Scraping along the wall between turns three and four. Yeah, he's back in the corner. Jerry Punch is right there. And a tough break for Hunt Trickle after a great ball. I'm going to go for my presses back. Up. Chevrolet Lumen, the Bobby Allison old machine. And they have cut a tire down on the right side. They will change the right side tire, fuel it up. And obviously, he's losing even more time. They're trying to pull some of the sheet metal away from that right front tire. This man, they won't cut the tire down. back out with less than 100 laps to go now. 96. Make that 95 as Allen crosses the stripe. By the way, since you guys haven't mentioned it, congratulations to the Duke Blue Devils who beat my Hoosiers last night. But here he goes. Your Hoosiers put up a good battle. Yeah, they did. They sure did. It's a good game. Let's see, there's an interval. Well, the clock didn't work that time, but it looks like that, uh, Oh, he got a little loose there. Now, Earnhardt was gaining, and then now Quickie's pulled back away again. Well, maybe we won't that time. We didn't see the clock. One 
1.3. You didn't see it, but it was 1.3. So it is just a little bit more than it was. The producer said he saw it, but I don't know if I would believe He's the one that counts, though. We'll do, oh, there we go. Now watch. Boom. One. Yeah, he definitely gained. Very nice. They should be pitting soon. I mean, they've been out there for like a hundred some laps without pitting for tires. So they need they they they'll need to come in sometime soon. If he goes caution free the rest of the way, so it's gonna come down to the final pit stop. And I predicted nine cautions, and there's been only nine, and there's been nine cautions, so I, that'd be a correct prediction. It's pretty interesting. I know people probably be like, "Oh, you rigged." Really Things are pretty much in a routine right now, as nobody is making great movement either way. Alan Kowicki is maintaining the lead by about 1.3 seconds over Dale Earnhardt, and he maintains an advantage over third place Dale Jarrett. We'll yeah. I think the body, Terry the body's probably going to get wrapped sometime soon. What to get? You need to get a run off the turn over there. You got to be up there to get a good run. I'm surprised they didn't use music that time when they were cutting the commercial. <laughs> Mark's coming in. And now so you used to you hear them talking. Even though they're not on live air, but they're on the satellite feed. Is that like a, is that sort of like the race hub now or something? Okay, yeah, sort of. Yeah, I think Quickie's probably going to win the way it's going. Been out front a lot in the beginning and now. He's just pulled away from everybody. Guessing game, I think Kawicki might have to change four because he has 30 laps more on his tires than does Earnhardt. And it's just like the day in Atlanta, but if Kawicki I'm surprised they haven't pitted yet. They need to. Kawicki, who's dominated the race, is a lap down, maybe two laps down. We mentioned earlier that Harry Gant won yesterday's Bush Grand National Race here that we weren't able to televise because of bad weather. It rained all afternoon and uh, didn't get finished till about 7 o'clock last night. You can see that race in its entirety this coming Wednesday at 3.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So set your tape recorders for the uh, Budweiser 250 here at uh, Bristol that was run yesterday. Now, also we'd like to remind you about the Formula One race coming up at midnight. Speed Week next Saturday night at 7.30 and... Saturday Night Thunder, which was on at 12.30 a.m. last They're talking night. about the broadcast time of 9 um, Saturday. for that time period that week. Right now, we're just seeing these cars driving around the race, but we're looking at Earnhardt, but I'm telling you guys, the way, there's got to be some decisions made here pretty soon. Yep. Let's go to John Kernan, who is in Kowicki's pit. 
members of the crew are planning on pitting in about 21 laps. Now, 21. 21. What's now, plus 10? 21. That me. <laughs> Classic. They would have 217 laps on the left. They haven't seen good tire wear, but that may be pushing it just a bit. Another thing, these guys know the importance of going up against the top gun crew. It'd be funny if they say they're in 69. They've been down here loosening up. Oh, here comes Ricky Rudd. Oh, he definitely sped coming in the pits. There's no way. <laughs> you tell, he was booking it in there. Probably end up going two laps if he gets penalized. Oh, Freppo Don's in the wall. He was another guy that was like up towards the front. But they did. Brett Ricky Red looks like he has quite a bit of wear on his car, like the front and part of the uh, right front or right front. There's Brett. He brings the Quaker State forward. Yeah, you can tell he has bow scars. And Jerry Punch will call this pit stop. And what was a good day has turned into a pretty dismal afternoon for Brett Lodine as he brings the battered Quaker State forward. Depression in the grill in the front. The grill has been cracked a little bit. The crew, Donnie Richardson and the rest of the crew, will change all four tires of the Kenny Bernstein old machine, losing valuable time here under the green flag. With a little over 60, we'll make it 69 left to go here. This event, Red Bull getting four tires. They're pulling two by the way to the right front, and he will be down and away. It's a lot of stop. He's going to lose a lot of laps here. Wow, 33 second pit stop. That's not good at all, especially at a short track. You're going to lose a lot of time. Richard! Oh, Richard does actually go pretty fast there. If he, if he passes out, that'd be pretty crazy. Oh no, Earnhardt! He was running so good! Wow, he was in second and then he hit the wall. Oh man, I knew they were going to pit soon and yeah, the tire went down for sure on Earnhardt. And he was, and this was like the best race he's had all season. He's been struggling, so man, that's disappointing for the number three team. Depends on how whether it knocked the thing out of line. Here it is as he comes off the turn two, starts off the turn two, the car just goes up into the wall. Point. Yep. Go I'm tire. He can drive that car very well. Yeah, that like pretty good I've seen the picture of him in the wall at Bristol before, but I didn't know where he's from, and it had the 18 in it, so I think that's where that picture came from. I have it in my book. It will be a four-tire change now for Alan Quick. He's over the line. He's over the line. He has to Quick, back yeah. up right there. That would have been a severe penalty. Now that he's taking the time to back um, it up. But in this book okay. I have right here, I think uh, I think the 1992 part that picture is in it. Hold on. Tires on that delayed him just a little bit. It may give a break to Dale Jarrett, who is off the jack and headed down pit road. Left side's going on Alan Kowicki. Dale Jarrett will take the lead. Now let's go down to Dale Earnhardt pitting Jerry Punch. Yep, it's in it. Kind of look that Dale Earnhardt has had all year long. Right there. Out. Right there. When suddenly they heard that explosion in turn one, the crew and all of them looked to the left. We saw Earnhardt's car speed up. Wow. The to the the I didn't mean to ruin the ending, but yeah, he hit the wall. I realized when he wrecked that I've seen a picture of like someone similar to that, and it turns out it was that wreck. I think at least only three cars in the lead lap now, probably. Oh, music. There we go. Oh, that green. Hold on. Well, there's 22 minutes left, so I went green the rest of the way. Dale Jarrett, is he leading? Wow, you got a great restart.
Yeah, yeah he is. Wow, so Dale Jarrett might get his first win Joe Gibbs Racing. Alan Kowicki running in second position. Dale Earnhardt remains on pit road. And the 28 car, which normally is driven by Davey Allison, has gone onto the racetrack under the command of Sterling Marlin. And uh, this is Dale Jarrett's first time to lead this year. Dale Earnhardt led Yeah, the that's the crazy. There's Joe Gibbs. Joe's watching. <laughs> So maybe Dale might be able to hold them off. We'll see. Allen's been pretty strong, so I wouldn't be surprised if Allen gives him a challenge. But he has a huge lead. He had an amazing restart. Wow, two top tens on short tracks last in 1991. Well, Allen's gained on him a little bit. There's Kowicki in second spot. I don't think Kowicki's losing any time right now. He's gaining, bro. Kowicki's gaining on him. Might catch him. This four cars are in the lead lap now. Oh, correct. Dale yeah, Jarrett's in his Chevy. And it would be Chevy's first win of the season. The hour, stay with us. We'll take a look at some action that occurred a lap ago, and the eight and the six cars came together. That's oh yeah. Oh we'll yeah, there yeah. There's Dick contact there. Mark Martin. Trickle is running in eighth place. I mean, in fifth place, man, eight car. Uh, Trickle's having another strong run. Good days. We'll it's crazy. I know. I've said that a couple times this stream, but it's pretty now. crazy, like how impressive that car and him has been. In this season so far, Terry Labonte too has been really impressive. Pretty hard. He laps down. So yeah. Wow, Mayer moved up the 16th. He was down in like the 20s earlier. It's because all these other cars wrecked and stuff. That mechanical problem. And he's going to gain some in Winston Cup points because uh, Allison, Elliott, and Jan all have had bad days. And Terry has once again had a very good day. Three car of Dale Earnhardt, one of those. Still being has had a very big worked on. Here in the closing stages of this event. He's sitting on pit road right now. Hit the wall out in turn number two a few laps ago. And they're still trying to get that car in uh, a position where they can put it back and, and i mean they were they were going to have a really good finish and then he just had that tire ground they've been out on that green flag run for so long their tires they would have to fit soon and they their win is tired but wow alan quick he's really caught up to jared He's really caught him for sure. If I remember seeing that race on YouTube before as well. <laughs> Allen's going to get by him. There's no question. Like, he's just so fast. And then there's the slow, uh, why I forget his name yet. Chad Little. Slow Chad Little and Dale Earnhardt slow, too. Earnhardt might be coming back down. There's Kyle Petty in pit road again. He's been in and out of the pits a lot. Well, he's defending the best he can. The Allen's Ooh. so close. Out of the he's beside him now. He's going to get by him in three and four. And let's 
Wow, whoa, well, did well, Jarrett's going pretty strong at the moment on the outside. Going pretty strong. They're battling for the win. This race has been pretty good. I don't think it was as good as Darlington, but it's been a pretty good race. Darlington's the last race to watch, so uh, the Trent the Trent South 500. You see, Joe Gibbs is nervous. He's like, "Come on, Dale, hold him off." Greg Stacks in the way in the 41. <laughs> it was a century ago. It feels like. <laughs> and you talk about Ben. You know, he he was a famous race driver, of course, and he's a famous announcer. But he has really made it now. Yeah. He's a, in the vortex comic book. I noticed yeah. that. Yeah. You and I are mentioned. I can't believe it. First time I've ever been in a comic book. 460 completed. 40 to 40 go. To go. Oh, oh the music. Race. Yikes! Forgot about that again. Ah. Huh. Even though his own car is crippled somewhat, but uh, allowing Davy Allison to collect points, even though it could actually hurt him in the long run. Good point. Very good point. I can do a VO. You got to do it up there. Oh, he's a little, little high. Allen's going to get underneath. Neil, what's your preference? You want Jerry to do that VO or you want us to mention it? Oh, he's trying to get him behind the lap bar of Brett. <laughs> You're the boss. <laughs> That's going to come down to the Got finish it. here. This is a great battle for the win. Yeah, Jerry. Whoa, Allen got loose. That was close. He really did get loose off that corner. Dale Jarrett continues to lead in the Food City 500 at Bristol with 35 laps to go in a big A auto parts on track interval. Oh, uh, yeah, you can see. I mean, the, yeah, he's been gaining on for sure. And then Jared pulls away a little bit, but quick he's been back and forth, like, all over his bumper. Just hasn't been able to get underneath him and get by him. And Jared was able to hold him off pretty well earlier. Well, that outside groove is working for him, Bob. He, I'm sure his spotter told him, to hey, get back up there. You knew how well you were running before the caution came out even with old tires on, so get back up there to save your tires up there. Allen has gotten under him a couple of times, but just couldn't make it stick down on the inside. So they're going to have to race. Here he comes again down on the inside as Michael Waltrip went Whoa. very high out of the way of the leader. Yeah, Nernhardt's pretty slow now because that we talked about when he hit the wall. Oh, and yeah, I just remembered too. There was nine cautions, and when Earnhardt hit the wall, that was ten. So my prediction was nine. So therefore, I did not guess that correctly. But you know, it's, I, I I predicted what I thought was going to happen. And the way it started off, there were so many wrecks that began this race. I was like, yeah, there's probably going to be like 14 cautions because of all the wrecks that are happening. But the second half of the race, a lot of green flag runs. Davey Allison Larry back out there. He wrecked earlier, too. And it did. <laughs> yeah, this season, you know, for those that have watched or heard about the ending of this season, the 1992 Hooters 500 Atlanta. Oh, Star Marlin win the car. Well, yeah, their teammate. Well, oh, no. Star Marlin's team is the Bill Elliott, so that doesn't make any sense. Why is why is he in the 28? That's odd. But as, as I was saying, like, yeah, the points battle became really close at the end of the season. But I haven't watched every single race from this season, so I'm, it's pretty cool to be able to do that. Because of YouTube, so, you know, to rewatch history. Or watch this three. If you or if you're watching this and you've seen this before, rewatching. But for me, like I haven't seen most of these races of the season, except for like two or three of them. So. Here comes Allen. He's gonna get by him here. Finally got by Jeff, by Dale Jarrett. 
mechanic, uh, mechanic of the race, even though you're now in second. Man. You think Dale might be able Looks to like, catch you know, Chevy's trying to break Ford's winning right, sorry, streak, and we really appreciate we'll see if Dale, what's Jerry can get back by him here. Again, like everybody else, this award goes to all the guys here on the team. It's a team effort. They've done a heck of a job today. Wow, Cope was in the way there. He really, <laughs> he really made it hard on Allen. Gained on him in that corner. That's Jimmy Baker. He couldn't hear the question, guys, because we're at the exit of turn number four. It's very, very loud down here. Obviously, is less than 25 to go now, and Alan Kowicki has passed Dale Jarrett. Kowicki got in the side of that 10 car just a moment ago, coming off turn two. I was going to wait and see, make sure he didn't cut a tire when he made contact with him. Yeah, Allen's going away here. It'd be really hard for Jared to catch him. I don't think he's going to. And all these lap cars are just getting passed by like they're nothing. But then again, it's Bristol, and Bristol in the 90s, there's so many wrecks, mechanical failures, just so many guys, just many, many laps down. Kowicki, I kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier too. Kowicki was doing good and began the race and he fell back and then came back again in the second half. And he, I wonder how many laps he led. We'll check. We'll look on Racing Reference once this race ends. We're going to look at the final results and the standings. So, yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm going to do that before the stream ends. about a half a lap behind in third place. Terry Body is, uh, is about a second behind straight. Brett Madani he was doing good earlier in 26 and he, he had problems. Yeah, he's just nervous. He's like, well, I was hoping he was going to win. <laughs> this Allen had the fresher tires and faster car. Yeah, I've seen the I've seen the 1991 Bud 500. I've watched that race before. <laughs> I wonder what the point standings were like after this. We're gonna see him, but I, I was uh, very curious. If I were to guess, Davey would still probably be up in the front. Allen definitely moved up in points. Labonte was probably up in the top three. Another nap of field summary for you. Four cars on the lead lap with Dick Trickle running fifth a lap down. Dick has had a great run. Out Rudd's three laps down. The loss, loss, I thought he was going to have a really good race and he had problems. I thought must race 14th. I thought he was way more laps down than that. Michael Watcher got a really good card soon until he had some overheating problems. Allison's 28, yeah. Petty, Petty's moved up a little bit. So, yeah, Allison did lose points. He did lead some at one point in the race. I just, I don't think he's going to catch him. He's, the quick, he's been pulling away slowly. Ten to go. Yep. Winston Cup win number four 
in 179 Winston Cup starts. Ernie Irvin takes the Kodak Chevy behind. Yeah, he's like, I'm just going to park it, brother. <laughs> Two laps to go. I'm just going to. He's like a Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch has done that before, too. They just pulled it in the garage. He's like, I'm already so many laps down. There's no point in continuing when we're almost done. <laughs> More lap cars. And Quickie, you know, he won the championship this year or this season in '92 and uh, in 1993 in the spring race before the spring race the Bristol. Um, he tragically died in a plane crash. Um, very unfortunate. He he was a really great driver. And you know. Sad, sad to see it when people pass away, and you know these these drivers, they they put their life on the line all the time on the track. But you know there's things that have happened off the track to the drivers, like you know Quick he was plane crash, um, helicopter crash for Davey Allison, Rob Moroso, uh, 1990 rookie of the year, he got killed in a highway accident with a trailer, you know. I, I could go on and on, but yeah, four laps to go for Alan Kowicki. He's about to put Labonte a lap down. Labonte's the last car in a lap down. Or last car in the lead lap. I don't know why I said last car a lap down. That doesn't make any sense. Yep, there it goes. There he goes. Puts him a lap down. Way to go. Yep. Well, Wiki passes by Dale Earnhardt again, who's running very slowly at the bottom of the track. Two, two laps to go. Man, it's crazy, you know, when I, I've never live streamed a race before, like, watching a whole race, so it has been quite the experience. And pretty, it's been pretty long, but it's gone by pretty fast, too, at the same time. And the W for the 17th, first of the season. That was a great race by that team. And great race by Dale Jarrett, too. He fought back and got a strong second. Ken Schrader got third. John Kernan. Well, we're Paul Andrews, a very happy Paul Andrews. Tell you, Dale gave him everything he wanted, but Alan. I don't think you're going to show the victory lane interview because there's less than or about three minutes left. But. Do the Polish victory lap for us. Is very happy crew chief who's headed to victory lane and so is dr jerry punch all right Alan so i think Kowicki they cut to uh, this the part bumps. we'll be back to talk the kawiki dale jarrett finishes we'll second, see the results here Peter, terry labonte and dick trickle finished in fifth position our speed world coverage being ah uh, then there's a copyright music all right so i'm going to stop it here and um let's see here Look up racing reference. 1992, Big City 500, racing reference. Check this out real quick. If the internet works. <laughs> I have a lot of tabs up, so that could be a reason.
Well, if I click on all races, it's going to show all the winners, and I don't want to spoil anything. Rats. Driver averages. Oh, this might work. Okay, yep, here we go. Alan, wow, you led 282 laps. I didn't think you led that much, but it was close. Uh, that was very... Wow. So... My fourth man. Uh, Strickland, eighth, even though he had a lot of problems. There's Rusty. Yep, yep. Greg Sachs, Earnhardt, 18th. Yep. Standings. Oh, that's the results. I went... I was hoping it would show, like, the standings, but... Doesn't look like that'll happen. Anyways, um, appreciate everyone for joining, uh, and watching in. I'm sure, uh, y'all you, enjoyed, and if you're watching this on Twitch, I really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who has watched. Uh, if I'm able to get this on YouTube, thank you all for watching this as well. And if you're new to the channel, I encourage you to follow, like, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Hopefully I can do more of these uh, as the season goes along. I'm not going to do it for every single one because that's just impossible. I'm just so busy with all this stuff. So, um, yeah. But anyways, I appreciate everyone for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.